from the 31st. Oh, stand up. A kind of. Oh, and there's Bryce again. I wonder if she busted out the weed whacker this time for her Nightline appearance. January 31st, season 12. Season 2, episode 104 on January 31st. And I have an itch in between my cheeks. Peace cheeks. See? <laughs> Ariana DeBose, third day in a row, Argyle. Are they trying to, like, brainwash us into thinking this is going to be a great film? Oh, I should go watch it because, look, they had three guests in a row. How about the fucking ABC and Disney has a fucking interest in the fucking uh, profits, huh? You think fucking Disney or a subsidiary of the Disney Corporation fucking maybe is responsible for this film? So the more press it gets, the more tickets they could sell, the more money goes into Disney's pocket. Just a guess. What production company? What studio? Is Disney involved? Is Did Disney make it? That they're taking all the fucking actors and actresses and throwing them all over. I'm not going to watch it. Cole Sprouse from Zach and Cody. No, that's not it. It's Zach and Dylan. I don't know. The one where the two twins are like running around a hotel trying to like fuck Lisa Go Turtle or something or Selena Gomez's characters or some shit. The Witch. Lisa Frankenstein is the name of the movie he's in. Well, good to see. Good to see you've not done nothing but gone uphill from working with uh, Adam Sandler. And playing a fucking Archie character. Dr. Melina Jampolis. Is she the girl from that one reality show like 12 years ago that I had a crush on? I don't think so. But she provides nutrition advice for healthy aging. No, it's not her. No, she was very overweight. She would not be providing any nutrition advice. Well, let's get started. And here's Bryce. Nothing like a redhead with... Kind of nothing, joy. nothing like a redhead with red lipstick and red blush... Hi. <laughs> You're jealous. No, honestly not. I mean, cats don't even register on my way. And do a leap. Now I have to go to the washroom. <laughs> You're jealous. No, no honestly not. I mean, cats don't even register on my way. I'm a dog person. Alfie the cat, played by Chip, the real life pet to Vaughn and his supermodel wife and co producer, Claudia Schiffer. It's making me laugh that this cat is going to be the most famous person in our family. <laughs> <laughs> Which is saying something. Yes, yeah, yeah. Famous felines aside, the cast of Argyle says they can't wait for audiences to come along on this keeper. There's a, a kind of, there's a joyfulness and a heart in all of these action set pieces that are not necessarily typical in a spy thriller. And it makes it so, so, so special. The book is phenomenal, sweetie, but... What happens next? It's called a cliffhanger, mother. Our thanks to Maggie. Argyle is out in theaters Friday. When we come back, instead of Tickle Me Elmo, maybe it's Therapy Me Elmo. Oh, Elmo, Elmo says, I'm a therapist and I need to examine Bye. your <laughs> Let me examine you for vaginal cancer. Elmo, Elmo has to touch the, touch the naughty. Jealous. No, no, honestly, not. I mean, cats don't even register on my radar. I'm a dog person. Alfie the cat, played by Chip, the real life pet to Vaughn and his supermodel wife and co producer, Claudia Schiffer. Co -producer. He's making me laugh that. Right. This Let me guess. Co producer because he fucking filled out her name in the, in the paperwork and listed her as a co producer so she can get some money. That's her, uh, uh, that's her, um, Stein. What's it called? Her, um, her allowance. There's a word for it. I'm fucking high. Henry Cavill, Bryce Howard. So they, they got this. They spent, you know why they're advertising the fuck out of this? They spent a lot of money on all these actors. All those actors cost a lot of fucking money to pay, except for John Cena. Save a life is fun. Great. Give us more fucking fire advice. Don't prevent a fire. Too late. It's late at night. All the kids that should be hearing this are sleeping. Oh, no, I would. Welcome back. You know, Elmo 
is one of Sesame Street's most beloved characters. So when he posted a question on X, formerly known as Twitter, people responded. Lots of people. Here's ABC's Will Reeve. Oh, Jerry, I'm just so happy to see you. You're almost twins. I don't really have twins. It started as a simple question from one of America's most beloved characters, Elmo, taking to X to ask, how's everybody doing? The earnest question unleashed an avalanche of responses. Elmo, I'm suffering from existential dread over here. And every Monday, I cannot wait for Friday to come. These are just regular people that bought a check mark. What's everybody doing? The earnest question unleashed an avalanche of responses. Elmo, I'm suffering from existential dread over here. And every Monday, I cannot wait for Friday to come. Every single day and every... It means, it means I hate my job. Existential oh, dread over here. No, Elmo, Elmo says that sounds like you hate your job. Elmo, I mean, that sounds like you hate your job. Maybe, maybe Elmo says maybe you you should jump off of a jump off a building. Maybe you should jump off building. Here and every Monday, I cannot wait for Friday to come. Every single day and every single week for life. Even President Biden weighing in, saying, I know how hard it is some days to sweep the clouds away and get to sunnier days. After the high volume of responses... Yeah, Seth says the fucking guy that's worth fucking millions and millions in the president. I understand it's a hard job. Weighing in. But it's saying, easy for someone that has fucking house and a lot of money and money in the bank and lots of assets worth a lot of money, lots of money saved up, stocks, bonds, savings, to say, I know it's hard, but you just got to get through it. I usually like to drink a little bottle of wine and listen to my Alexa. Well, I can't afford wine or Alexa. Now what would you do? Oh, well, I don't know. You know. I'll wait for Friday to come every single day and every single week for life. Even President Biden weighing in saying, I know how hard it is some days to sweep the. I know how hard it is some days to sweep the clouds away and get the sunnier days. Our friend Elmo is right. We have to be there for each other, offer our, our help to a neighbor in need, and above all else, ask for help when we need it. Even though it's hard, you're never alone. You're never alone. Hey, go go with, go help someone. Find a homeless man. Find a stray dog. Touch them. Give a hug to uh go 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 up to a random police officer and just give them a big bear hug while they're on duty. Hey, we can do it, man. Let's finish the job. What the fuck is this shit? What the fuck? What the fuck? Jesus Christ. This is all bullshit. Clouds away. All this applies to like 20% of the fucking population. Tell me. You know how hard it is some days to sweep the clouds away and get to sunnier days. After the high volume of responses, Sesame Street's official account shared a link for those looking for help with their mental health. This is the song, la 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 la, Elmo song. Elmo not shying away from his new role as America's therapist. Later writing, wow, Elmo is glad he asked. Elmo learned that it is important to ask a friend how they are doing. Elmo will check in again oh, soon. Oh, and you're friends with everyone in America. Yeah. How about you read the whole fucking post, you stupid fuck? Wow, Elmo, Elmo is glad he asked. Elmo learned that it is important to ask a friend how they are doing. Elmo will check again again soon, friends. Elmo loves you. A heart, heart emoji, heart cartoon, and hashtag emotional well-being. I'm going to go touch penis in Cookie Monster Mouth. Elmo is glad he asked. Elmo learned that it is important to ask a friend how they are doing. Elmo will check in again soon, friends. Elmo loves you. Hashtag emotional well-being. 
Our thanks to Will and Elmo. Finally, an historic miscarriage of justice that's finally been resolved. Kick off the start of Black History Month tomorrow night at 10... Wait, the people that beat Rodney King have finally had their dicks cut off in the castra, castra size? 13 p.m. Eastern, with Soul of a Nation presents Castrated? Exonerated, the murder of Malcolm X, and 55 Years to Justice, featuring my co-anchor Byron Pitts, following the season premiere of Genius, MLK X, right here on ABC. That's Nightline. Thanks for staying up with us. Good night, America. More Americans choose ABC News. Not really. That's kind of a lie. Then what? What's the other option? Then what? What they're not telling you is more than... Miscarriage of justice. More than Canada News. More than TBS News. You know what I mean? Like, they're not telling you then what? It's finally been resolved. Kick off the start of Black History Month tomorrow night at 10, 13 p.m. Eastern with Soul of a Nation presents Exonerated, the murder of Malcolm X and 55 Years to Justice, featuring my co-anchor Byron Pitts, following the season premiere of Genius, MLK X, right here on ABC. That's Nightline. Thanks for staying up with us. Good night, America. More Americans choose me. Cast Business is introducing the small bit. Bye. Save a Life is sponsored by Kida and the Home Depot. Here, anything is possible, as long as you can imagine it. And that's what makes our news unbelievably real. For some, the Chicago Auto Show was... Send cash $145 in sale. Do you, Fargo? You can with Wells Fargo. We can change the course of history. We must be a little bit. This is our reality. Wednesday, January 31st, 2021. Happy hump day. Welcome to the show. How you doing? Hi, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, forecast. I'm, I'm going to do the weather. Oh. I'm going to do the weather right for you guys. right into the weather. Because there's really no sports to talk about. Um, <laughs> it's going to be 40 degrees today, which is just one degree more than 39. <laughs> It does feel cold, though. Doesn't it feel cold? Yes, fun chilling. It's going to be up to, up to 50 tomorrow um, and some sun on the weekend, 42 okay. and 44. Okay. But, but out up there in Alaska, mm. they set a record for the earliest arrival of over 100 inches of snow. They've had 8.7 feet so far. Roofs and commercial buildings are collapsing in Anchorage. It's a lot. So, um, and, but the and they one know good thing, snow. they know snow. The one good thing is that they built the. See right there. There she goes again. She goes, yeah, and they know snow. And then he, he, she says, they know snow. And then he just copies exactly what, what she says. Hell? Almost like that's like an old school, like beginner's level acting trick that they teach you in acting classes. Hmm. Yeah, and they know snow. They know snow. Like, he has to stop what he's saying to address her and then repeat what she says to acknowledge, I heard what you said, now I'm going to repeat it out loud. Kind of like when you repeat something towards a chef. 
Let me get two French fries and three chickens. Three French fries, two chicken chef. Yeah, and they know snow. They know snow. Alaska, they know snow. Did they know snow? They know snow. They know snow. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Um, forecast. I'm, oh, I'm going to do the weather. Oh. I'm going to do the get weather for right you guys. Because the there's really no sports to talk about. Um, <laughs> it's going to be 40 degrees today, which is just one degree more than 39. <laughs> it does feel cold, though. Doesn't it feel cold? Yes. Fun chilling. It's going to be up to, up to 50 tomorrow. Um, Maybe and- because you're getting a breeze off the river. Just, just saying. But also, maybe it's because, like, think about wind chill. It's going to be 40. It's 35 degrees. But maybe the wind chill, it has a feeling like it's 20 degrees. You know, you're like, 35, that's not bad. You wear a jacket, you know, and a hat. Not in the world, but then you go out and it feels like maybe the wind chill has a feeling like 18 degrees. And some sun on the weekend, 42 okay. and 44. But, but... Yes, bone chilling. It's going to be up to, up to 50 tomorrow um, and some sun on the weekend, 42 okay. and 44. But, but out up there in Alaska, mm. they set a record for the earliest arrival of over 100 inches of snow. They've had 8.7 feet so far. Roofs and commercial buildings are collapsing in Anchorage. It's a lot. So, um, and, but the and one good snow. thing, they know snow. The one good thing is that they built this big mega snowman. Mega snowman. Mega snowman. They, they're calling it Snowzilla. Yes. It's over 20 feet high. Let's talk about the size of the gloves on that snowman. I know. Who made those? I don't Are those know. boxing gloves? Yeah, they look like boxing gloves or something. <laughs> I do uh, I do love a, a nice big snowman. You know, we've been watching we've been watching uh True Detective. Yes. With Jodie Foster. Which is set takes in, place in Alaska. Yeah. And uh and so here's my critique of the show, because I'm pretty sure the creators of the show watch this show every day. My critique of the show is that it takes place in winter where it's like 24 hours of darkness. This period of time. So they, the when... period of time, and they keep telling you that it's day six of darkness. Okay, but what I want and what I need is as a viewer a little is a little clock. digital clock at the bottom of the yeah. screen telling me what time of the day or night it is. Because you never know. I never know. Like, they'll say, you want to get some lunch? And I'm like, lunch? Okay, so it's afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> because you can't tell everything looks like right. nighttime all the time. Right. And it does lend this eeriness. I just think for us viewers at home watching the show and invested in this, it yes. would be helpful to know if we're talking about night, night, or day night so everybody at max please add that <laughs> thank you could you re- you know retroactively add that in for the next episode a little digital clock just for me yeah, so i can stop Kelly. shouting it at the tv yes please <laughs> also out west back to back atmospheric rivers expect to soak the west coast um i think that it means the drought is yeah, yeah, the current drought. The current drought, drought, which is always good. I like when the West Coast in Southern California gets a lot of water. They need it. They, they need to get the need. water tables up, the mm-hmm. reservoirs up. And you know, you know what else that means? It means we're going there for the Academy Awards. Yes. That's oh, right. Yes. 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 The Angelinos can thank our show because we historically bring a deluge of water with us. <laughs> just in time for the Academy Awards, just in time for everybody to say to me, you know, it never rains here. Yeah, like, that was my, that's what you keep telling me. That was my yet. experience with it as well. When we'd go out for the, the Academy Awards or, you know, in February or March, it's always a little rainy. And then I spent four months there working mm-hmm. and gosh, it's really nice. You told me it never rained once. Oh, not one it was day. so nice. Yeah. Remember I had, I have this nice little convertible that I never get to drive on the East Coast. I had it shipped out to the West Coast. I was going to drive my convertible. You know, I was like late 40s at the time. Yeah. I drove it down. I got on Sunset. I put the top down. I looked around. It's a bunch of 40-year-olds in their in their convertibles. <laughs> desperate, 
desperate. So you wish you could put the top back the up? Top back up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, it was me and a bunch of other like 50 and 40 year olds in their convertibles. I'm like, oh, this is sad. <laughs> this is really, really sad. That's when I, I, I remember I visited you. We went to that market and I saw, okay, so I saw. Uh, for the first time ever, and I had heard Gelman talk about it, kombucha tea. Oh. And I was like, oh, I've got to try this kombucha tea because it's probiotic. It's good for your gut health, whatever. So I buy the one that's, you know, there. And uh, I see it's got all the sentiment in the bottom of it. Yeah. So I, you know, immediately shake it up. Oh, I remember that. And then I opened it in my car, and it exploded like a bottle of champagne right. during the Stanley yeah. Cup. <laughs> yes, in that car. It was so, do you remember, oh, in your car? Well, I remember it afterwards, too. Because yeah. after you left, I would still smell this little fermented Oh, yeah, like smell. vinegar smell. Vinegar I didn't smell. know you don't shake. <laughs> don't shake no, the kombucha, you Kelly. your first kombucha today. Don't shake, don't shake it. Don't shake it. Shake it. Yeah. That sediment like at the bottom is supposed to be there. Um, so, speaking of sl uh, snow, uh, you know, in Minnesota, they have this snow plow naming contest oh. because they get so much snow that their snow plows are very active and so far uh the snow plow named uh um <laughs> where is it it's up top it's up top yeah taylor drift it's funny because it kind of sounds like taylor swift but it doesn't <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, uh, it's the way she presents it, too. The writing was great. The presentation, the delivery, everything. Great A comedy. Active. And so far, uh, the snowplow named... Why didn't they call it Hurricane Cunt or Avalanche Snow Job? Why didn't they name it Avalanche Cunt Whore? Uh, um... Back to December all the time. I go back to December all the time. <laughs> Wait, where is it? It's up top. It's up top, yeah. Taylor Drift. Yeah, <laughs> name that. that was the number one. Taylor number Drift one? is number named one. Yeah, number one. All right. <laughs> She wins everything. She wins everything. For you, Taylor. Taylor Drift won, followed by Clark W. Blizzwald. <laughs> uh, other honorable mentions are uh, Beyond Slay. <laughs> I like that. Dolly Plowton. <laughs> uh, you're Killing Me Squalls. <laughs> Fast and Flurious. And Barbie's Dream you know how you were talking about going to the dentist and you took some laughing gas to, yes. to, to calm you down? No, I was perfectly <laughs> calm, but then you insisted insisted I should try laughing it like gas. Truth, it was like truth serum. <laughs> I could have asked you anything. I, I could have asked anything. you anything. I don't, I don't need laughing. Like, I enjoy going to the dentist. I'm one of those weirdos. I like a teeth cleaning. I do too. I, I yeah, I don't. Mm. I could do it all the time. I do, I really don't mind it. I am not fearful of the dentist. I love Doctor Lohenberg. I love him <laughs> so much. He's like he's one of my best friends. Yeah, I, mean, I, I do really like, him. like I do like him very much. But this other dentist, um, they're actually using this nice little dog to sit on people's lap. Aww. <laughs> Calm people down. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yes. Less use of laughing gas. Less, yeah, less, less, you know, the nitrous oxide manufacturers are very upset about this. Um, you know, but you know, Doc, you speak about Dr. Lohenberg. You know, what he would do also is there was this nice lady that would come in and ask you if you wanted a foot rub. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That reflexology. Yeah, the reflex. I said, yes, please. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was very nice. That was nice. Yeah. Whatever happened to I don't know. Huh. Bring her back, Dr. Lohenberg. Dr. Lohenberg, what happened to the nice lady? <laughs> she probably got sick of rubbing everybody. Like rubbing disgusting. people's feet. Yeah, can you imagine? No. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No. Oh. Feet can be, you know, very dicey. Um, uh, there's this new trend also. It's not that new. Audrey was like, uh, Gelman was talking to me about this item. And Audrey, you know, 
stands like she's getting, she's steaming my outfit in the morning. And she goes, it's not that new. It's like a two-year-old trend. But Gelman was like, well, it's new in the paper today. <laughs> well, Gelman is the doyen of fashion. The doyen of fashion. The uptick in searches. Yes, an yeah. uptick in the scarf coat trend. Scoot. So it's called a scoat. And apparently people are tired of losing their scarves everywhere, mm. which, by the way, I find scarves and hats and gloves all over the street. Do you? Yeah, yes. they Don't you see yeah. they're just everywhere. Back of cabs. Yeah, they're just sure. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, anyway, so if you're one of those people and you forget your scarf everywhere you go, this scarf is attached to your coat. You should. So, you, so now you have to lose your whole coat. Yeah. <laughs> your show the photo there. Oh, show the photo? Yeah, yeah. show it up. There's the photo, in case you want to know what it looks like. Oh, I, I like it. I'm just, I'm not going to buy one of these. I'm going to wait for Dave Mullen to figure out how to make one of these for me. Because if anybody on our staff can make it, it will be Dave Mullen. And I put you to the challenge, because I know that you can make it. You're welcome. Are you a knitter? Oh, he can do anything. Yeah. I know. I said he probably has a loom in the house, and he goes, you know, I've wanted to do that. I took a looming course in college. Really? No kidding. Just like to be busy. Yeah. He also loves to be on camera. He's <laughs> 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 figured it out. Very, he's sweating right now. Look at him. He's, he's sweating. He just, he just had a lot of fun. Hey, we have a big show today. Ariana DeBose is here. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, what he start, what he's, what that guy is failing to admit. Again, they don't finish the sentence. What he was, what he forgot to, what he neglected to mention was that he took a looming, he looked, he took a looming class in college because a girl that he was, because a girl he wanted to fuck was taking the class. A girl he liked and wanted to like see naked on top of his face was taking the class. You know what I mean? He followed her, overheard her say, I'm going to take looming or looked it up in the computer and said, I'm going to take looming just so he could be in that class. So that way he might have a better shot of, of, of her saying yes to him when he gave her an indecent proposal to heck to go skinny dipping in his bathtub with a bottle of moonshine that he made with his dick. Oh, and my buddy Cole Sprouse is here. Oh, my buddy. Look at you. You have friends that are in their 20s. You know, when I was filming that um, Archie movie, Jughead or whatever the fuck it was called, um, Riverdale, when I was filming Riverdale in Canada, Cole Sprouse is on the show. He was actually, he played Jughead. Um, Cole was trying to uh, fuck Lola. He continues. He asked me like twice a week, every week, is, is Lola single? Is Lola single? Is she still single? Does she cheat on her boyfriend? Does, does she, is she, she DTF? Hey, is, your, is it cool if I fly your daughter out? She doesn't have, you don't have to hang out with her. I'll take care of her. Saying stuff like that. Isn't that crazy? Ariana DeBose is here. Yeah. 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 Buddy Cole Sprouse is here. Nice to see him. I know, I love having him here. And Strive for More in 24 Super Seniors Week continues with Dr. Melina Jampolis, who will give us some nutrition tips for healthy aging. Cool. Like that. Like that. Important. Guys, calm down. It's not going to be any food we want to eat. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's going to be berries and nuts. And, no, no, no berries. No, be no berries. No not berries. A, really? She's talking no nutrition. Berries. Wait a minute, Gelman. You told us you love it when old men eat your berries, right? Well, I'm talking about my testicles, though, not dingleberries. <laughs> no berries, trust me. I offered him my berries. He said no. <laughs> I, I'm sure it's going to be berries and nuts. And, no, 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 no berries. No, no berries. Not a, really? She's talking nutrition, not just the okay. food. 
She's talking nutrition, she's not just protein food. For you. Not just protein. She's going to give you the right amount of protein to eat. Oh, the right amount of protein, protein for yeah. my body size. Yeah. It's a constant. You have that app. Mark has an app on his phone where he tracks his, what is it, your every macros more, and your micros? Every morsel I put into this body it tells me everything. I'm not doing that because I'm it's a fun. snacker. I'm a, like a chronic you're a, snacker. You're a greaser So as well. I wouldn't even understand how to use that app. Like, okay, I had two handfuls of Pepperidge Farm Goldfish. Yeah, you, that, that one. Is that in that app? Yes. <laughs> yes. And what would that track? It would tell you what the, the calories and the carbs and the salt. Yeah, but it would that. tell me stuff I don't want to hear. Correct. <laughs> I'm not doing like when it. I go, when I go and grab almonds, I, t I count the almonds. Oh, my. Why? I know exactly. I know exactly. Why? I know exactly what twenty all almonds feels like. You're full of shit. You're so full almonds. of shit. Twenty almonds. Twenty almonds. Twenty almonds. That's your, your, yeah. your on-screen image like you're trying four. to maintain. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Fucking liar. Yeah, but but you're how many liar. calories is twenty almonds? He doesn't oh, find out for you. He forever. doesn't fucking know. Okay. Yeah. He's lying Aren't to you. Curious? He's uh, lying you to you. Yeah. Little hind fact. Yeah. All right. It's the real reason you all showed up today. I know why you're here now. I know. I know. I see it in your eyes. It's time to play. I gotta tell you something. For an audience that was so jazzed up about it, that was really lame. <laughs> I thought it was. That was okay. It was. Okay, at best. Okay, um, I, listen, listen. I've had a rough January. I'm glad it's over. This is my last day, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go out with a win. All right, let's say hello we'll to see. Lauren Merkel from Shorewood, Wisconsin, who watches the show on WISN. Hello, Lauren. How are you? Hello. Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you guys? I'm great. doing great. You know, your last name is also a wrestling move. Did you know that? It's called the uh -huh. Merkel. <laughs> I did not know that. I'm not familiar with wrestling. Yep, the Merkel. Mark, show Gelman how the move goes. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I can hit that. And if you're going to be on a talk show and you're going to go commando and wear your birthday suit under your dress and you want to show everyone your Venus fly traps goatee and you have a shaved flower, then you would use a Merkin. And... You can get that just by changing the L to your name. And if you change the L to your name, it's a Merkin, which is something that you could put on your below your belly button to show men where the Garden of Eden is. Over. This is my last day, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna go out with a win. All right, let's say hello we'll to see. Lauren Merkel from Shorewood, Wisconsin, who watches the show on WISN. Hello, Lauren, how are you? Hello, good morning. I'm doing well. How are you guys? I'm great. doing great. You know, your last name is also a wrestling move. Did you know that? It's called the uh, Merkel. <laughs> I did not know that. I'm not familiar with wrestling. Yep, the Merkel. Mark, show Gelman how the move goes. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no way I can hit that move, but maybe I'll figure it out. All right, you know how this game works. You've given us two statements. One is true, one is false. I have 60 seconds to decide which is the truth. And if you stop me, you'll win this. <laughs> Okay, Lauren. It's so dumb. Lauren. <laughs> Carry your two statements. My mom and I won $25,000 in a casino. Wow. Or I lost 100 pounds in two years. But Gelman, you couldn't do the Merkel on Gelman. I hurt him. It's like, I, I might have to look it up. But you basically get behind, and the whole thing is, is that I kind of do like a half Nelson where you get up, but you kind of like, you don't just like go up like here. You kind of like lean and get around the throat and you pull the throat back and then you take your knee and jam it in their spine and you kind of arch their back while you're like pulling their neck. And then you take your left hand. And then after that, you take and then you lift them up and throw them up and then they land and you go onto their kneecap and you bend their like back. So the dude weighs like 130 pounds soaking wet. I don't know if... It'd be great to be messing around with his spine and his neck, tossing him in the air like a little girl because he's like almost 70 years old. And uh, I mean, the dude's a frailer than 
<laughs> Mr. Burns in like the Simpsons episode. Like that's who that's who he is in real life. You ever played a game like what cartoon character are you? This guy's Mr. Burns. He'll be sitting there 95 years old. Yes, excellent. Being produced in the show. And he'll fall down the stairs and like shatter his leg in eight places and be like, I'm okay. Take me to the Gelman Hospital. Like he'll have his own hospital, the Gelman Wing of the Gelman Hospital. Here are your two statements. My mom and I won $25,000 in a casino. Wow. Or I lost 100 pounds in two years. Don't, what are you going to do? Look at her and you could, you're, 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 uh, you can magically tell she was fat two years ago. Look, my mom and I won $25,000 at a casino. I lost almost 100 pounds in two years. This is very hard. She, this might be true, especially if she wants to brag about it on national television. But people like bragging about their family and money like that. And she gets to talk about her mom. This is hard to do. But also, if she got turned on to Ozempic, she might have lost 100 pounds in two years. And like in the first year, she lost like 18 pounds. And then in the next six months, she lost like. 11 pounds and then like she might have lost like maybe like 18 pounds the first year and then like in the next six months she lost like seven pounds so she lost 25 pounds after 18 months <laughs> she might have lost like maybe 25 pounds the first year 20 like 27 pounds then she lost like in the next six months, she lost like 11 pounds. So after 18 months, she lost 38 pounds. But then she found Ozempic. And in the last six months, she's lost 62 pounds. <laughs> Which would mean that... Which would mean that she went from like 320 or like 330 to 230. Does she look 230? I'll tell you that. In her picture, she looks like she's an overweight kind of biscuit. Oh, that girl? No. Oh, how are you? No like way. That girl did not lose 100 pounds. No, no, no. She already, she weighs like 125. She did not go from 225 to 125. Unless she used like Ozempic twice and the first time it took her down to like 180 and the next time it took her down to 140 and then plus all the extra exercise. So it, it but it's, I'd, I'd ask her, did you use Ozempic or a weight loss drug similar to Ozempic like Manjaro? And if you stop me, you'll win this. That girl did not, this girl's hot. She, there's no way that girl, that's a natural frame. That is not the body frame. That skinny body is not that of someone that used to weigh 200 pounds. That is a girl that has a skinny frame and bones. She's probably she's probably the girl that could eat 3,000 calories at a buffet seven days in a row and gain, like, and lose weight. Like, she's a girl that could eat junk food five meals a day for a whole year and gain, like, two pounds. She doesn't her, uh, her favorite bullshit. Thing. I'm bull. I'm going to say without any questions asked or any um, clues that the truth statement – is that her in two years is that her mom and her won $25,000 at a casino. That's the truth. I lost almost a hundred pounds in two years is a lie. The word almost is kind of sus lie. I'm going to say it is true that you and your mom like to gamble and you actually struck it rich. And you won $25,000 at a casino. at a casino. But what you're not telling us is that before you won that $25,000, you guys had lost a combined $62,000 over the last two decades. So you're still in the hole. Look at this fine-ass girl. No. Well, Lauren, that's a great photo of you. Um, Thank you. Let's talk about the $25,000. What game were you playing? Slots? Kino. Yeah, slots. My mom and I used to go a ton, okay. um, and we happened to get pretty lucky. We were... Uh, girls night out and walking around and she loved wheel of fortune that was her uh, her favorite game okay huh. all right and tell us about the hundred pounds uh in two years what yeah tell how did you do it what was your program what, what yeah. made you to get into it so after i had my daughter this was about 11 years ago 
I kind of got fed up with just like your mom bod, I guess, and I really wanted to get into health and fitness. So just a normal diet, working out, changing uh, changing some things permanently, and that's how I naturally lost everything. Lifestyle changes. Lifestyle changes. Yeah. And you have a, and how old are you? How old am I? Yes. I'm 31. Actually, I'll be 32 on Friday. Okay, so she could have an 11 year old. She looks 18 in that photo. <laughs> she does. Yes. All right. It's very rude to ask a woman her age. I know. <laughs> it is kind of rude, right? <laughs> not when she looks like she's 18. It's rude to ask an old woman her age, not a fucking girl that looks <laughs> that's 31 and looks like she's 18. It's a compliment. It's rude to ask a woman her age. I know. <laughs> it is kind of rude, right? <laughs> I, I know you're trying to protect your your dynasty of moms and shirts. <laughs> All right. I'm going to... Uh, I think he's going to get it right. He'll, he'll, he'll guess the casino. We'll both be right. Protect your, your dynasty of moms and shirts. <laughs> Rude, right? <laughs> I, I know you're trying to protect your your dynasty of mugs and shirts. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that you lost almost 100 pounds in two years. That is true. Yes. Oh. So, can I just ask, uh, how did you do it? We said lifestyle change. You said you cut some things out. Like, what was like the most dramatic thing you did? Did you just start running, like when you never did before, or start going to the gym when you never did, or did you cut out all carbs or cut out sugar? Like you stopped, like you used to drink soda pop, like a, a liter a day, and you just cut it out completely and just started drinking nothing but water and and cut out all soda. Did you used to, and, and did you? Like stop buying. Did you eat a lot of cookies and pastries, and you cut that out, and you, and you just didn't even buy any. You didn't even moder do it moderation. You just didn't eat it together. Did you like switch to eating like? Uh, did you cut carbs out, or did you kind of go on a paleo where every morning, or like every morning, you just ate like? Did you just like make go juicing and make like green juice like every morning for like breakfast, and then like lunch was like always like a salad with vinaigrette, or like did you just? eat nothing but like salads and like salads, smoothies and like green juice and like just stick to like chicken breast and tuna, lean protein, no carbs. And, and just like make that like your every, like everything you eat will be lean protein, vegetables and fruits. And that's it. Like you don't eat rice or did you cut out, did you cut out alcohol? Did you just stop drinking beer and wine altogether or, like what was the like what were the main things? Like what was your worst habit you had when you were overweight? I mean, I'm happy for you and your lifestyle changes and your health, but I'm so angry that Mark got to go out with a bang. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Kristen, you didn't win the mug, you didn't win the t-shirt, but you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Warm It Up Travel Trivia. Oh my God. She's so... Talk about a guilt. I want to hit them. Here is Joanne Bassard from Philly, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Playing for. Okay, you're playing for a trip for two to the Los Estabos Boutique Inn in Panama. Eight days, seven nights. Ooh, the audience likes. Ooh, the audience likes that. No, they're doing that for the girl from Philly, for Granny. Now, this is the part of the show where I try to imitate the dancer of the evening or hooker as we call them. And you get to judge me and rate me on a scale of 
One to a hundred. Here we go. You saw her. We'll wind it back if you need to see her again. I could try that better. I hate this computer. I'm going to fucking fucking throw my feces out all over it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> all right. Kristen, you didn't win the mug. You didn't win the t-shirt, but you still have a chance to win a valuable trip. It's time for Warm It Up Travel Trivia. <laughs> Okay, you're playing for a trip for two to the Los Estabos Boutique Inn in Panama. Eight days, oh. seven nights. Oh, the audience likes that. Ooh, no, Gelman just pulled out his ding dong. Three meals daily. That's Not to be confused really with his Twinkie. One excursion per day. I love an excursion. Yeah. Surprise valued at eight thousand dollars. You have twenty seconds and only one guest, Lauren. Good luck. All right, Lauren. On yesterday's show, what type of music did I say I ask for when I get an MRI? Oh. Reggae, reggae. Ooh, Jamaican reggae music. Bob Marley. Stuff you smoke you weed to and have. Yes. yes. Put down the Percocet, you fucking junkie. I missed that. Also, I have... hey, maybe you leave the flask of absinthe at home, all right, before you fucking come here and eat your fucking rice cakes and, yeah, and fucking it. barf them up. We did. February second. February second. I really have to dial in. <laughs> I missed that entirely. Also, I had no idea what music he listened to for an MRI. I had to. Look, I had to look at the answer. I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> I know what music I listen to. But I, classical, a classical. Yeah, music. Yes. Yeah. Congratulations again, Lauren. Now you get to help make the day of a lucky member of our studio audience who will receive a Roomba vacuum cleaner from iRobot, so please pick a number between 1 and 132. I will pick number 6. 6. 6. Yay! Yeah. Hey. Hey. Oh, she's wearing a mask! Go back to where you came from! Okay, this is it. We've got a big announcement to make. Live is hitting the road. We are bringing the show back to Las Vegas! We're doing four shows from the Blue Live Theater at the Fountain Blue Las Vegas along the world-famous Las Vegas Strip to help them celebrate their grand opening and welcome them to all the excitement. Oh, my gosh. It's the sports and entertainment capital it of really the world is. with some of the world's biggest superstars, entertainers, countless celebrity chefs, and us. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're going to be in the Las Vegas area on February 26th and the 27th, we'd love to see you in our audience. Go to our website for all the details. That's going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. We're going to Vegas, baby. We got to go back to our wedding chapel. We have to go back to the wedding chapel. We have to go back to our wedding chapel. Say it again. We didn't hear you the first three times. You want yes. to renew the back? We should definitely. We have to go back to. We have to go back to. We have to go back to. 
our wedding chapel. We have to go back to the wedding chapel. We have to go back to our wedding chapel. Yes. It's like every 12 years. You want yes. to renew the vows? We should definitely renew our vows. You know, Mark yeah. and I are yeah. very not superstitious yeah. about that at all. Yeah. Hey, and we just confirmed Lionel Richie's going to be there. Oh, yeah. He's oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, man. Very exciting. All right. When we return, Ariana DeBose is here. Stick around. Still alive. We continue strong for more 24 Super Seniors Week. Tips for healthy nutrition. This girl, this girl like, this girl like the fucking smash back in the day, yo. And this girl getting done. Do you see her shape that is? I got you. I got you. Shut up. We're going to be in the Las Vegas area on February 20th. We have to go back to our wedding chapel. Yes. It's like every 12 vows? years. You yes. renew the vows? We should definitely renew our vows. You know, Mark and I are very not superstitious about that at all. Yeah. Hey, and we just confirmed Lionel Richie's going to be. Chapel. It's like every 12 years. You want yes. to renew the vows? We should definitely renew our vows. You know, Mark yeah. and I are very not superstitious no. about that at all. Yeah. Hey, and we just confirmed Lionel Richie's going to be there. Oh, yeah. He's oh, amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Look at that sexy baby all night long. When we return, Until I fall asleep at 1042 because I took my carbohydrate filler and my cholesterol medication before lunch instead of after it was difficult because it was lunch was at 11 58 and i didn't know what to do can we do it tomorrow hon stick around <laughs> If you're living with moderate to severe plaque psoriasis, let me tell you something. Oh my God, I don't want to sell. Are you age? Who's proud? For more than 24 It looks like a shirt, but it's not. The one unlimited line. Plus, get the new Samsung Galaxy S24 on us. Tomorrow's show, Catherine O'Hara will be here. Super seniors, we continue with a look at the bless, the best places to retire. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, we're semi-retired. <laughs> we talk about this all, all the time. time. Uh, and a performance by John Batiste. Brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> Tomorrow's show, Catherine O'Hara will be here. Uh, and for more than 24 super seniors, we continue with a look at the bless, the best places to retire. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, we're semi-retired. <laughs> we talk about this all, all the time. time. Uh, and a performance by John Batiste. Brilliant. The Academy Award winner slash nominee. Yes. Yes. Our first guest is a talented actor, a wonderful dancer, an amazing singer. Oh, yes. She's and also she's a lesbian. An Academy Award winner. Another one. Please welcome back to live, Ariana DeBose. <laughs> yeah, 
Award winner, another one. Please welcome. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. Hey, Jenny. The performance by John Batiste. Brilliant. The Academy Award winner slash nominee. Yes. Yes. Our first guest is a talented actor, a wonderful dancer, an amazing singer. Oh, yes. She's also a lipstick lesbian that eats pussy. Please welcome back to live, Ariana DeBose! It's chilly. I got to keep warm. No more like it's chilly and my nipples are hard as fuck. And I don't want to pull a fucking Bryce Dallas on the show. I mean, <laughs> but her good Michael Kors never hurt anybody. Oh, no. No. Yeah. Yeah. So she. Thank you. Okay. The last time we spoke, yeah. you had just won said Academy Award. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think that's Do right. Do you yes. remember that at all? No. Oh, well, you were amazing. I don't. I remember. Yeah. At that point, there was quite a bit of champagne in my yeah life. of course yeah did you course. have an amazing night did you go out all night what I, did you, you do know, i didn't go out all night i did go to the vanity fair oscar party because uh -huh. i was like you know you don't have to wait in line when you have an oscar that's right, right. there's you no way to line. you cut the line and i was like this is the one time i get to do this right. so um we went me and my, my friends, my mom was with me. Uh, we had a great time. And then, I'll be honest, I went and got a buffalo chicken ranch wrap. Okay. And then I went to bed. Yeah. In fact, I, I ate the wrap, and me and my best friend and my mom just, like, looked at the statue, and I was like, oh, God, what do I do now? Um, yeah. Well, my best friend and my mom, she means her girlfriend and her mom. Was that from Subway? Did you stop at Subway and get the wrap? Or was it a Quiznos thing? Then I'll be honest, I went and got a buffalo chicken ranch wrap. Nope, I don't believe you. I think you're lying. I think that's a lie. You're not being honest. Because why? If you were going to be honest, why would you tell us you'd be honest? The only time people say, preface a statement by saying, I'll be honest or I'm going to tell the truth, is when they're lying. Like when someone says, no offense, but they're going to offend you. When someone says, I'm going to tell the truth, I'll be honest. You know, I fucked like 30 girls when I was in eighth grade. Like what? The fuck are you? was with me uh, we had a great time and then i'll be honest i went and got a buffalo chicken ranch wrap okay and then i went to bed yeah in fact i i ate the wrap and me and my best friend and my mom just like looked at the statue and i was like oh god what do i do now um, yeah. but it's great where do, you, where do you keep the statue it's on my mantelpiece. Okay. like i have a real working fireplace don't ask me why that's oh very unsafe gosh. um but uh it sits in the corner and there's a picture of actually jamie lee curtis when she won behind it and a picture of me and steven spielberg and i was just like this is cool and if it never happens again at least i get to walk by it every morning on my way, way to get my coffee and it's sort of like my sign of like be better be better and collect my welfare checks at least if this never happens again at least i get to wake up every morning and walk past this on my way to get my coffee from mcdonald's and my welfare check. Best. You won't be able to afford Starbucks in the next 10 years. It's going to be like $25 for a cup of coffee. A super mucho grande cuco. And I was just like, this is cool. If it never happens again, at least I get to walk by it every morning on my way, way to get my coffee. And, get and it's sort of like my sign of like, be better, be best. You got this. Keep going, yeah. you know? Yeah. <laughs> And I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it until somebody finally does it. The fact that you have not made that Academy Award your door knocker. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so heavy. I don't know how, like, how would I? You like, have to have a few of them to sacrifice one, to as, sacrifice one, one as a door knocker. I figure Which it I'm out. Sure Let me work happen. on it. You, yeah. Yeah. you come up with a good idea, you hit me yeah, with that. I will. And we'll think I about definitely it. will. Of course, you uh, won the Oscar for playing Anita in West Side Story. Mm -hmm. And we just lost the legendary Cheetah yeah. Rivera, who... Um, passed away yesterday yeah um 
please tell me you got to meet her and that you, I did. I uh, met Cheetah several times. Yeah. Um, I actually I won a Cheetah Rivera award. Okay. Oh, um, well before I won an Oscar. That was actually one of the first things I actually won in my oh life. Gosh. Um, and I met her first then, and then the first time I hope hosted the Tonys, we actually had the privilege of preventing uh, presenting Best Musical together that year. Oh. And she welcomed me into the sisterhood. And I am, um, ooh, I'm not crying this morning. <laughs> she was a force of nature. Yeah. And she showed so many of us what was possible, especially for dancers. Like mm. she broke barriers. She, because she was, I am. And we all miss her a great deal, but we work very hard to make, keep her legacy alive and do it very well. Yeah. yeah. Still in New York, you have a little Oh my God, I'm a New Yorker. I'm yeah, such yeah. a New Yorker. We got to dance together. <laughs> we boogied together about Ooh. a month ago. Madonna. Madonna. Oh, oh, yeah. You mean when I was there? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait. I saw her. I was on my deck. You were sick. What was I doing? What was I? I was taking were, pictures. He, picture, he sent you photos and videos the whole time, I promise. No, no, no. He sent me a photo <laughs> off the stage. And they I, were going through. They were going through. It was such a great it show. It was your first one, right? It was the first time I'd yeah. ever seen Madonna live. And, t and tell the audience. I, I keep telling the audience, I'm like, if you haven't got your you tickets, need to go. You have you to go. go. It is such a dance party. It is a dance beautiful show like here's the thing about madonna that like she has lasted yes. think about the longevity of that career yeah. and she's still up there and doing it and doing it well and shining light on so many different people paying tribute to all the friends and loved ones and inspirations that we have lost over the years to me she is like she's the goat for me she really um, is and, like, she's such an inspiration COVID-19. I'm not waiting. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid is an oral treatment for adults with mild to moderate COVID-19 and a high risk factor for it becoming severe. That, you, you shouldn't be at fucking 18 mil. You shouldn't be. I'm like, if you haven't got your you tickets, need to go. you have to go. It is such a dance party. It is a dance party. It is a beautiful show. Like, here's the thing about Madonna. That, like, she has lasted. Yes. Think about the longevity of that career. Yeah. And she's still up there and doing it and doing it well and shining light on so she many different... doing it and doing it and doing it well. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. I represent Queens. She was raised out in Brooklyn. I was people out, paying no, trip. I was raised out in Queens. She was raised out in Brooklyn. Oh shit. Okay. Uh-huh. And there you go. Great. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. What happened? What is this shit? And exactly why is this not fucking recording? Ah, because you're fucking around. different people paying tribute to all the friends and loved ones and inspirations that we have lost over the years to me she's like she's the goat for me she really uh, is and, like, she's such an COVID-19. You know, you kind of put me in an awkward position when you say things like that. I guess yes, but at the same time, I'm not trying to disrespect you or trying to, like, 
Peace of mind says, I'll prove that you're not gay. Like, I'm not, I don't know. Welcomed me into the sisterhood, and I am, um, ooh, I'm not crying this morning. <laughs> she was a force of nature. Yeah. And she showed so. All right, who the fuck died? And I met her first then, and then the first time I ho hosted the Tonys, we actually had the privilege of preventing or presenting Best Musical together that year. Oh. And she welcomed me into the sisterhood. And the sisterhood of what? I will. I will think about I it. definitely will. Of course, you uh, won the Oscar for playing Anita in West Side Story, mm -hmm. and we just lost the legendary Cheetah yeah. Rivera, who um, passed away yesterday. Yeah. Um, please tell me you got to meet her in that. Meeting. I did. I uh -huh. met Cheetah several times. Yeah. Um, I actually I won a Cheetah Rivera award. Okay. Oh. Um, okay. Well before I won an Oscar, that was actually one of the first things I actually won in my, oh my life. Gosh. Um, and I met her first then, and then the first time I ho hosted the Tonys, we actually had the privilege of or presenting Best Musical together that year. Oh. And she... Except a plot twist, you never really know that year. Oh. And she welcomed me into Start the crying. sisterhood. Start crying, 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 um, start crying. Ooh, I'm not crying this morning. <laughs> she... fucking sucks. I said Incredible. cry, bitch, cry. It feels good to just live in the moment. With every other month, Cabanuva, I'm good to go. Ask your doctor about Cabanuva today. One of the stars of Argyle. We can't really uh, say too much without giving a lot away. Definitely. Can, how would you describe the film? Well, the movie is about the cat. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, in all seriousness, like this movie is from the twisted mind of Matthew Vaughn. Yes. <laughs> but he has taken, he's such a genius, he has taken all the cliches we know about spy movies. Some of them he helped invent and flipped them on its head. Uh -huh. This movie is jam-packed with plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. You never really know where it's going, which is part of why I wanted to be in this this film. Yep. It's got an incredible cast. Uh, Bryce Dallas Howard, Sam Rockwell, Samuel L. Jackson, Catherine O'Hara, yeah. John Cena, Henry Cavill. Like, come on. <laughs> like, what's not to, to, to love or want to see? And it's an epic. Like, you have to see it in the cinemas. It's a full experience. Take your friends. I'm telling you, it's one of those things you're going to want to watch, experience, and then go talk about it. Mm. It's like... <sighs> And also the cat. There you go. Yeah. Action movie. Do you, action. Like, do you like action? Movies? I love action. It was yeah. sort of my first um, foray. Um, he hired me. Matthew hired me during the pandemic. He didn't really know what I had done in West Side Story, and so I was very grateful that someone gave me a chance on merit. I was like, "How cool! Oh my gosh, I might have a career." Um, <laughs> and and he was just like. Are you game? Let's go. Let's try. And I was like, yes, sir, please give me anything. No, there are no small parts in his world. And it was such a fun experience. I bet your dancing background would come in handy. Oh, Actually, baby. Hi. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? On the yeah. soundtrack, right? Yeah, I do. Boy, you have a number boy, boy George. Boy oh, George. George. The great yeah. boy George. Come on. Um, yeah, Matthew called me. After I won the Oscar, um, and he was like, I've been thinking about this for a while, but I definitely think we should do this now. Boy George and I uh, sing a song called Electric Energy that appears in the film and in the end credits. It's a disco banger. And honestly, <laughs> for me, it's become my anthem for 2024. If the energy is not electric, I do not want it. <laughs> so check it out. It's super fun. And then there's also this crazy, um, this crazy, like Adele-esque... Uh, ballad that I get to sing that is also in the credits. So if you'd like to just like watch Sit the credits, the <laughs> have a lovely listening experience. Um, I was living, <laughs> living my spy ballad dreams. So oh, amazing. Ariana, I am so happy. <laughs> <laughs> Argyle in theaters and IMAX Friday, February 2nd.
experience the music of Bob Dylan like never before, including like a Rolling Stone, I Want You, Forever Young, Tony Award winning musical, Girl from the North Country. Playing at the CIBC Theater February 13th to the 25th. Visit BroadwayInChicago.com. Losing weight and maintaining it can be challenging. We have a whole team here at, at Denver Health, so we can help guide you on that right path. Even if you lose like one pound or if you lose 100 pounds, it's the quality that improves your life. Learn more at HealthyDrivenChicago.com. COVID-19. I'm not waiting. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid is an oral treatment for adults with mild to moderate COVID-19 and a high risk factor for it becoming severe. It does not prevent COVID-19. My symptoms are mild now, but I'm not risking it. If it's COVID, Paxlovid. Paxlovid must be taken within the first five days of symptoms and helps stop the virus from multiplying in your body. Taking Paxlovid with certain medicines can lead to serious or life-threatening side effects or affect how it or other medicines work, including hormonal birth control. It's critical to tell your doctor about all the medicines you take because certain tests or changes in their dosage may be needed. Tell your doctor if you have kidney or liver problems, HIV-1, R, or plan to become pregnant or breastfeed. Don't take Paxlovid if you're allergic to Nomatrelvir, Ritonavir, or any of its ingredients. Serious side effects can include allergic reactions, some severe, like anaphylaxis and liver problems. Chicago.com. Welcome back. He's the TV and movie star who is living a sweet life. And <laughs> Kelly and I just love him. Please welcome back Cole Sprouse. Yeah. Oh, are you going to give your TV dad or your TV friend's dad a little French kiss on his vagina? Understand that you're coming home to New York, moving to Brooklyn. Coming back, coming yes. back. Off to Brooklyn. Are you excited for that? You're, you're, so, you're, you're skipping Manhattan, you're going right up to the cool section. I Brooklyn. was in Manhattan long enough to know that I should go to Brooklyn for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, we've talked about this before, but you know, you and your brother. Uh, were babies in show business. You started out like you were literally, literally babies. born yep. into this business. Don't remind me, yeah. Do you, uh, you know, is there... She just is, said you were literally doing porn in this business. They were babies doing porn? Little twins. That's the thing. When you have twins, it's fucking easy money when you're babies. It's fucking so easy to get them in with commercials and in the fucking television shows. Because they need twins to fucking play babies and two-year-olds and four-year-olds. And once once they turn four or five years old, they start talking. Man, if they don't cry, that's money. And if you can get them started, like, taking classes with, like, a teacher to get them used to, like, like you know, like, that's their kindergarten. It's just taking speech classes, acting classes. Very, very easy stuff. Just to introduce them to, like, hey, so by the time they're six and seven, you know what I mean? They do. Yeah. Do you, uh, you know, is there, what was your like earliest first memory of working on something? Uh, pooping on commands <laughs> in a diaper commercial, I remember, was the first thing my brother and I did. <laughs> uh, so twins worked really well in the industry as kids yeah, because you yeah. could just trade us off. We were a little exploit yeah. for uh, for labor laws. That's how you get ahead, kids. <laughs> uh, have a twin. twin. Yeah, have a twin. Um, and then Grace Under Fire, oh. I think uh, we played... I think oh we played the God. same part on Grace Under Fire. Oh, my gosh. You guys in Grace Under Fire, you and your brother were the Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen. <laughs> That's who you were. Your character in Grace Under Fire was the Michelle Tanner. And you and your brother were Mary-Kate and Ashley playing the same little kid. That's this is, you know, same kind of, I mean, I mean it wasn't, uh, I think, I don't think Grace Under Fire, I don't think Grace's character's husband died. She was living with her sisters, but she... Um, taking care of three sons, but she, I think she was a drunk or something, but still that's who you were in that kind of sitcom. You were basically the, you and your brother were the <laughs> Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen.
played, I think oh we played God. the same part on Grace Under Fire. Oh my gosh, I'm looking how cute you are. Yeah, I had that bowl cut until last year, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's so I'm, funny. I'm a big daddy with Adam Sandler. When's your Netflix sort of special there. coming out? Uh, that was my first time in New York. No kidding. Very first time in New York. Um, I remember us filming for... <laughs> you look the same your whole life, uh, yeah, by yeah. the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Um, I remember us filming for what felt like six months. I think it was six months, which at the time I thought was a totally rational amount of time to film a movie. Yeah. No, no. We were just enjoying ourselves for about six months. It was great. It should have probably taken about three weeks, but we really... <laughs> it's, a, it's a sailor movie. It's a, the, yeah, the, yeah. The, the whole idea was to make it take as long as possible and have as much fun as possible. Yeah, you know, you know, you got to do a sailor movie now mm -hmm. because from what I understand, like the gifting at the wrap yeah. of a Sandler movie is extraordinary. You get so cars. now you gotta get you gotta get in a Sandler oh, movie. Oh well, now we're wow. talking. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have any uh, idea, like? what it was to be famous when you were young? Did you have a concept of fame? I don't think I was conscious until about 2018. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, no, I, uh, I do remember actually the first, the first time I kind of felt whatever that was is I was on Friends for about eight to ten episodes. Right, because you were Ross's son. You're Ross Geller's son with the, the, with the lesbian. I forget her name. Gosh, here's a little fucking double picture. And that's when you felt it, huh? I forget what the kid's name is. Andy? Yeah. No, no, I uh, I do remember actually the first, the first time I kind of felt whatever that was is I was on Friends for about eight to ten episodes. And I remember, I think I was like seven or eight at the time. Uh, and I remember walking out. I'd never seen Friends and I'd never, uh, yeah, I'd never watched anything. I was obviously too young. Uh, and I walked into that studio for the first time and I knew there was an energy in that studio that, that made me go, this is the biggest show in the world. Ah, right? like a vibe, like you understood like a, the vibe of immediately, something. Immediately, and, I, and I, I honestly can't explain it. I, I don't really, you know, I know I'm from LA, but I don't do the energy thing. Right. Right. Like the, the vibes. Right, right. Um, <laughs> but I knew it was massive. I knew yeah. it was massive and I felt very intimidated when I walked in. No How did you feel working with Jennifer Aniston? I was head over heels about her. That was the energy uh, shift yeah. that you felt. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've, I've said it a couple times before, but I blanked when she looked at me in the eyes. Like, I completely lost what all of my mean? lines, all the practice. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I was like working with Mark, too, every time. Yeah. Yeah. Like, oh, that's what it was. You were smelling her pheromones. You were smelling the odor of her hoo-ha. And you were a kid, you're like, what's that? It was hypnotizing. Her pheromones were hypnotizing. That's what it was. It was her pheromones. They were hypnotizing. You just didn't know what it was. You're like, what's going on? And then you went into, like, you know, Ross or Ross, but um, what's his name? The guy that David Schwimmer. You went into David Schwimmer. Then you went into Schwimmer's uh, uh, dressing room, and you said, what's that funny smell? And then you went into Schwimmer's locker or uh, dressing room and said, what's that funny smell? You would find any reason to hang out with Jennifer Aniston can you help me with something? Something you don't need help with, but you'd say, can you help me? Be like, oh, sure. You got your first little boner? Completely lost all of my lines, all the prep. I was like, ah. Oh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I was like working with Mark, too. Every time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hey, we have a little B-roll of you the first time on this show. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> and you still walk like that. Yeah. <laughs> I can't even tell which one is which. I, I know. I was staring at you trying to figure out, yeah. is that you or is that your brother? Yeah, that's when it worked. I don't think Dylan and I could play the same part. <laughs> yeah. All right, we need to go to break. When we come back, we'll get to how you died to play his new role. Early on, you'd say, I think I should go for this really cool, like, edgy cut. Like, do it, babe. He encouraged me to get a Carol Brady haircut. <laughs> he encouraged you to get that Michelle Pfeiffer haircut. It turned uh, end up looking like Carol Brady. Musical.
<laughs> no, in all seriousness, like this movie is from the twisted mind of. So what, we're getting an Oscar buzz now? Is that what we're going to do? I could see this movie getting an Oscar nomination. It seems like Hollywood's already given it the nomination for not even doing anything to earn it. Just the same way Robert De Niro already had his Oscar nomination in the bag. He's working with Scorsese. He gets one nomination. After I won the Oscar, um, and he was like, I've been thinking about this for a while, but I definitely... Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? On the yeah. soundtrack, right? Yeah, I do. Boy George. Oh my gosh. The great yeah. boy George. Come on. Um, yeah, Matthew called me after I won the off. Hey. You know, I find that with a lot of twins, there's always one that kind of like veers a little towards the acting. The other one wants nothing to do with it. And even though they're not twins, like Paris Hilton was all about the camera and the spotlight. Like her and Nikki were like going on red carpets and they're like 16 and they're like getting invited to these parties. And like mom and dad are saying, hey, if you guys want to show up, you're old enough, you know, you're 16, you're young ladies, you know, and they did it for a while as like the Hilton twins. And I think Nikki didn't like it, something about she didn't like all the invasion of privacy and cameras. And it was probably like she didn't mind the pictures and stuff like on red carpet events and parties and stuff. But it was kind of like probably like the first time she was just like at a grocery store and like a pair of sweatpants or something, or I don't know, but, but like someone came, but like someone came up to her and started taking her picture or paparazzi was like outside of her house. And it was kind of like, Whoa, this is not what I expected. This is not what I want. Like, I don't mind having people take my pictures at premieres or even when I'm like in Hollywood, just walking. Cause that's why there they are. I know they're there, but when I'm in like Pasadena, or if I'm in like Beverly Hills, like just trying to go shopping and all of a sudden there's six or seven cameras waiting for me to come out the store and then like following me as I walk down to my car, like this is not my life. But so she kind of left it. Fucking Paris stuck with it and said, I love the attention. I love the camera. And she went the other way. Right. Mary Kane Ashley. I don't know which one. One of them was in Weeds, the, the Showtime show. And not to say she really stuck with acting, but. She did, you know, kind of go back to it for that one show. She might have done some other stuff where I think the other one was strictly more to like fashion and building their empire or whatever they do and marrying, you know, men old enough to be a grandfather. And like with you two, you know, your brother for some, I mean, for some reason or whatever you might know, but you know, uh, uh, it seems your brother, as he got a little older, realized I don't really like this acting thing. You know, I did it when I was little because mom and dad told me to, I did it, you know, I did this because, you know, the parents told me to, or or, and you just do whatever, and then you start getting money, or maybe it's like, hey, if you do this little commercial, I'll buy you, like, a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers pajamas or something, or I'll buy you a little car or something. I don't know, but somewhere along the lines, like, after Big Daddy, because both of you did Big Daddy, and then after Big Daddy, was he kind of like, Mom, I don't want to do this anymore, or somewhere along the line, he kind of, he just felt like, I don't like this, and he said he had other interests, all of a sudden he was interested in something else, and, you know... He's like more of a big behind the scenes guy. He likes movies and art and everything, but he likes, he really found himself really falling in love with like the behind the scenes and writing stories and, you know, screenplays and, and working behind Cast the scenes on and any producing screen. projects you can and trust writing projects. The ABC7 and Accuator team. Into directing and just you know, really, production, really production, really production, buying scripts, producing them, um, Writing his own project scene, you know, getting along. So he likes behind his team at 10 o'clock. ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 10. Mm -hmm. Do you like any other music? Mm -hmm. Off the cure? Mm -hmm. oh. It's not that kind of cure. It's like a, it's a band. They can't make you better. I mean, they can, but emotionally. Mm, that sounds like a little fun movie. That's Chris Brown in a scene from Lisa Frankenstein. So you don't speak in this film. Is that correct? I figured it was time to give everyone a break. <laughs> <laughs> How hard 
so was that sad. for you, Cole? Oh really my God. For me. <laughs> oh, Selena Gomez is going to be knocking on your door with her fucking bush spread open and letting your giraffe roam around her bush gardens. That's Cole Sprouse in a scene from Lisa Frankenstein. So you don't speak in this film. Is that correct? I figured it was time to give everyone a break. <laughs> How hard was that for you, Cole? Really hard for me as Cole, for sure. Yes. Uh, no, I, I, I foolishly, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be so grunt. much easier. Grunt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, to, yeah no, no, it was not that at all. But I did train with a mime. No kidding. I did. Did you break him? Did you break him? <laughs> had, uh, his name was Lauren Salm. He's really incredible, but uh, I knew I was in the right place because he had a license plate on his car that just said speechless. <laughs> uh, did he, did he show up in a little striped shirt and a beret? <laughs> no, I do wish he did, though. I do wish he did, though. No, he, uh, he was great. I, I do that thing when... When I work uh, on a on a film where I try to convince the studio uh, that I absolutely need to learn a new skill, yeah. uh, even if it's so not true. Yeah, but miming is a good. But style. miming was great, uh, and I, it was a lot of fun, and and I got to roll around on the floor and pretend to be a zombie. It was a really really fun thing. So tell us about the movie because it takes place in the eighties, which mm -hmm. is like our when, sweet spot. And this is our yeah, yeah. This is our jam. Yeah, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say. <laughs> did, I mean, did, did you have to have an eighties expert tell you things, or did you no. talk to your dad? Yeah, I, uh, so I was born in ninety two, and I and I think uh, yeah yeah I, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, I graduated high school in 89. Uh, sorry, man, not my problem. Uh, uh, but the stuff that, you know, my dad put on for me, we're, we're all, we're all you know, the products of the 80s. And so I think, you know, some of my first interactions with entertainment were, were from the 80s. And I mean, obviously, it lives very differently for me than it does for, for people that actually went through it. But it didn't feel so distant. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think now with TikTok. Well, that's like me. I was born in the 80s, but, you know, I listen to songs from the 70s and it sounds a little different because, you know, my version of rock and roll that I grew up with as, with a kid is it was uh, was 80s hair metal. So my first introduction to rock and roll was Bon Jovi and Def Leppard, Van Halen, Motley Crue. Poison, Rat, Cinderella, White Snake. Like White Snake, here I go again on my own. That and pour some sugar on me and slippery when wet, the like the whole damn album. Like I was like in like my baby my second grade teacher was my babysitter for like a year. And she had all these records and all these VHS tapes of like live concerts that she would buy. She would buy like Motley Crue live in concert at the LA Forum, you know, only $8.99. And she had all and she just flooded my brain with all this stuff when I was like seven years old. And I listened to it when I was a seven and eight. And as I when when Bon Jovi came out with their greatest hits album, and like when I was like 12, that was like one of the first things I bought. Like, not a lot of like seventh graders are like in love with Molly with Molly with um Bon Jovi. Everyone's listening to whatever. The usually back then it was a lot of in Chicago it was a lot of house music, a lot of techno. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, Yolanda. Uh-huh, yeah, yeah, you look so fine. Stuff like that was kind of what was on the top 40 radio that our kid that us kids listened to. Michael Jackson was on the radio. You know, guys like Prince and Elton John were Billy Joel, but like we were like third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. That stuff wasn't appealing to us in like sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. It was either it was either house music, techno stuff, or it was rap. That was the big big stuff for you know stuff like inform. You like your boom boom down. Somebody come around the shed, looking the sun, they're looking the money in my hand. You like your boom boom down. And NWA was out, but still we were a little young for NWA. I was introduced to NWA by a kid in my neighborhood who was a couple years older than me because he had an older sister, had an older boyfriend, so so. You know, the 12 year old gets an NWA CD uh, from his 20 year old sister's boyfriend. And the 20 year old guy gives it to his girlfriend's younger 12 year old brother. And the 12 year old brother plays it to me when I'm 10. And that's how you get introduced. You know, by that time in like sixth, seventh grade, <clears throat> Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Tupac had just come out. 
crisscross, jump, jump. So rap music was really kind of like the big thing. And if it wasn't that, it was house or techno. And if any of my classmates liked country music, no one ever talked about it. There were no kids that raised their hand and said, oh, my God, I love the new Reba McIntyre. You know, not in Chicago, maybe in like sixth, seventh grade classrooms in the early 90s in like Nashville and stuff. They might have been talking about this, you know, Shania Twain and Garth Brooks and, and the Judds and Randy Travis, is and awesome. Alan Jackson, Walt Brooks and Dunn. But back then it was house techno, whatever they played on radio was house techno, rap music. Okay. You know, and it wasn't even, a, there was no Mariah Carey, there was no, you had to listen to like 100.3. If for those of Chicago, you know, 100.3. 93.9 before they did the whole Christmas music thing for two months. Um, uh, 100.3, 101.9, the mix. That's the stuff where you'd hear Celine Dion and you would hear Mariah Carey and you might hear Janet Jackson. Well, Janet Jackson, I will say, was played on um, uh, 96.3, which was like the number one Billboard top 40 pop radio station for younger people. Um but that's kind of, yeah, that was kind of it. But me, I'm sitting there listening to like metal music, not metal, but uh, to hair band music. You know, from the 80s. And to this day, I love Bon Jovi, man. Like Bon Jovi to me, to me, like one of the best bands of all time. Yeah. And as I got older, I really started doing research, especially when the internet came around. I was like, man, when the internet first came around, I was so, I was doing so much research on everything. There were so many answers I wanted that I could never find out at the library. We didn't have encyclopedias. And as the internet got better and better, I'm just like searching this and this and this. And then cable gets bigger. Now there's like eat your Hollywood stories. There's the biography. There's behind the music. All that. And I'm just learning. And it's just like, like Johnny Five, short circuit, more input, more input, more input. I'm like, <sighs> Like reading 800 page books is in like five seconds. And that's where I just embraced it. I would just embrace it. I, I focus all my brain power on learning all that stuff that I, I didn't even, I didn't focus on learning math and science and history, world history, U.S. history, geometry, English. I didn't care. I didn't care. None of this stuff was going to help me. Well, I think, you know, I, I, physics, chemistry, all that I, I, I focus on gym, Spanish, girls, and pop culture, and learning about the past. You know what I mean? And trying to keep up with the present. That, that took all my time. And then once I got introduced to marijuana, forget about it. I was done. I escaped high school with a 1.3 GPA, and I got the F out. It is seen from Lisa Frankenstein. So you don't speak in this film. Is that correct? I figured it was time to give everyone a break. <laughs> How hard was that for you, Cole? Really hard for me as Cole, for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I, I foolishly, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. This is going to be so grunge. much easier. Grunge. Yeah, yeah. Not yeah. To, yeah no, no, it was not that at all. But I did train with a mime. No, I didn't. I did. Oh, did you break him? Did you break him? <laughs> <laughs> had, uh, his name was Lawrence Salm. He's really incredible, but uh, I knew I was in the right place because he had a license plate on his car that just said speechless. <laughs> did he, did he show up in a little striped shirt and a beret? <laughs> no, I do wish he did, though. I do wish he did, though. No, he, uh, he was great. I, I do that thing when... When I work uh, on, a, on a film where I try to convince the studio uh, that I absolutely need to learn a new skill. Yeah. Uh, even if it's so not true. Yeah, but miming is a good skill. But miming was great. Uh, and I, it was a lot of fun, and, and I got to roll around on the floor and pretend to be a zombie. It was a really, really fun thing. So tell us about the movie, because it takes place in the 80s, mm -hmm. which is like, our when, sweet spot. this is our, yeah, yeah, this is our jam. Yep. But even in the 90s, I was still listening to 80s music. Even now, I could blast out and have an 80s mixtape of, it'll be, it'll be, um, Motley Crue, Van Halen, probably a majority Bon Jovi, one White Snake song, uh, and majority Bon Jovi, Def Leppard, um, and a couple Van Halens, a couple Motley Crues, the one White Snake song, a little bit of um, Warrant, a little bit of uh, the guy who's brought the guy who went on to star on Broadway, Nelson or some the blonde guy with the long hair that was a rock singer that ended up being in like um, Phantom of the Opera. You know, they, that group had some songs. Um, when I see you, when I see, 
When I see you, did you break? When I see, when I see you smile, I can face the world. Oh, and na 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 na. One hit wonder to me, but I don't even know the group. But that was my favorite. That still probably is. Oh, it's really hard. That you know, I think I have to give that my number one song. I loved that song as a kid, and I can't say it's not my number one song now because I played it out. But it probably would be, would be one, and I think pour some sugar on me is number two. Here we go again on my own, and then like three Bon Jovi songs in a row, like four, five, and six. The drums, man, in the eighties, all those hair bands, the drums were killer, man. A lot of good drumming on those records. Cool. <laughs> yes. uh, no, I, I, I foolishly, I was like, oh, this is gonna be great. This is gonna Just be grunt. so much easier. Grunt. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. Have to, yeah nice. No, no, it was not that at all. But I did train with a mime. No, I didn't. I did. Did you break him? Did you break him? <laughs> uh, his name was Lauren Salm. He's really incredible, but uh, I knew I was in the right place because he had a license plate on his car that just said speechless. <laughs> did he, did he just, show up in a little striped shirt and a beret? No, I do wish he did, though. <laughs> I do wish he did, though. No, he, uh, he was great. I, I do that thing when... When I work uh, on a on a film where I try to convince the studio uh, that I absolutely need to learn a new skill, yeah. uh, even if it's so not true. Yeah, but miming is a good. But style. miming was great, uh, and I, it was a lot of fun, and and I got to roll around on the floor and pretend to be a zombie. It was a really really fun thing. So tell us about the movie because it takes place in the '80s, mm -hmm. which is like our when, sweet spot. This is our yeah. yeah this is our jam. Yeah, what was that like? Yeah, I mean, I was gonna say. <laughs> did, I mean, did, did you have to have an '80s expert tell you things, or did you no, talk to your dad? Yeah, you know, I, uh, so I was born in '92, and I and I think yeah yeah yeah. 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 <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, I graduated high school in 89. Uh, sorry, man, not my problem. Uh, uh, but the stuff that, you know, my dad put on for me, we're, we're all, we're all you know, the products of the 80s. And so I think, you know, some of my first interactions with entertainment were, were from the 80s. And I mean, obviously, it lives very differently for me than it does for, for people that actually went through it. But it didn't feel so distant. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean, I think now with TikTok, everything it's is back. like, it's all back. Yeah. It's I do good. think, I think enough. To and I think like now, but, you know, and then when you listen to that and you really pay attention to everything from the bass to the drums to the melody, like there's a lot of more solos. Songs were longer in the 70s. A lot of solos. Like people were smoking a lot of weed where they would do this song and then also they take a break and it's just the guitar and acoustic electric. You know, and they're just playing for like a minute straight with no, you know, it seems a little more like that. You know, a lot of guys with facial hair and it was just a different kind of a little sound, whether, you know, it's going to be Leonard or, or Skinner, as people say. I say Leonard, but Skinner, when you listen to Kansas and you listen to Zeppelin um, and you listen to Kiss, it's a little you could tell it's, it's kind of a different thing. I think to. I think technology, as far as like straddle, straddle casters, is that what it's called? Like there were some things that came out that were there for bands of the mid to late 80s to utilize for their sound that weren't invented in the 70s. And same thing as you got into the 90s and like Rage, like Nirvana and Pearl Jam and Rage Against the Machine started coming out. Um, there were just other tools they could utilize, just like hip hop. You know, hip hop, it was just a drum machine. Boom, boom, shh. It was like robot, robot, wah, 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 wah. but now all of a sudden, look at through 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 hip hop music and rap rap music. Producers have had new tools every five ten years to work with that the the generation before them didn't have. Look at those, listen to a lot of eighty songs from like the early eighties. The drum beats are all kind. It's a lot of there's like three basic songs song templates for beats, and they all kind of sound the same. Um. You know, and now people now with auto tune, it's a whole thing. And I don't even I, now I used to like rap music. Now I specifically like 10 years ago, I kind of like realized I have to say I like 90s rap. That was a big acceptance that I'm getting old when you don't say, man, I like rap and R&B. Now I say, no, no, I like 90s rap and R&B. And I like some stuff from the 2000s and some stuff from the 80s. But I would say pretty much my rap kind of goes from like 85 to 05. That's kind of like my. 20 year period of stuff that I liked and listened to, you know. So, no, I don't listen to anybody. It's just not good to me. I don't like it. It's not what yeah, I, grew up I do think. 
I think enough time has to pass for people to then go like, oh, oh that's how cool that is. Like the 40-year rule. Yeah, yeah, four decades. Hey, dude, will you please come back to see us? Yeah. We'll see you later. Yeah, we'll see, see you later. later. All right. Lisa Frankenstein is in theaters February 9th. Come up next, nutrition for healthy aging. If you love watching our show from home, now's your chance to see it live in person. You can check out all the stars. Be part of the show. Maybe even win a prize. But the stuff that, you know, my dad put on for me, we're, we're all, we're all. You know, and as I got older, man, I go to the early 80s, I go to like. I feel so distant. Berlin, yeah. Yeah. Well, speed I, wagon, I mean, I course, think now with journey, TikTok, like that, everything is like, it's all that. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, do like, think, I think enough time has to pass Arkham. for. I don't know if he was a diehard Beatle, but he introduced me to the Beatles. I knew the Beatles were, and I heard song, and I knew Twist and Shout. I knew this, but he really introduced me to the Beatles. Like, he liked to drink whiskey. I liked to smoke weed. He had all these Beatles songs, and he had them on his, like, computer. And he just, like, we went through, like, we listened to, like, 50 Beatles songs. And he would talk about, well, who this was, why this was written, who was written after the story. feels so distant. And I really, yeah. like, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think now with TikTok, Everything is back. like it's all back. Yeah, it's I do good. think. I think enough time has to pass for people to then go like, oh, oh that's how cool that is. Like the 40, 40 year rule. Yeah, yeah, four decades. Hey, dude, will you please come back and see us? Yeah. We'll see you later. Yeah, we'll see, see you later. All right. Lisa Frankenstein is in theaters February 9th. Come up next, nutrition for healthy aging. I think enough time has to pass for people to then go like, oh, oh that's how cool that is. Like the 40-year 40, 40 rule. Like when yeah, it's yeah. so popular and everyone's listening, you're like, oh, that's you know how many songs are in the 90s that when they came out, I was like, that sucks. I don't like that. And now I listen to the songs from the 90s. And it takes me back to my childhood and like, do, 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 do. And I did not like that song when it came out. I wasn't listening to it. I mean, I could kind of like, it was kind of catch, but it wasn't, nah. You're very loyal to your to your genre of music. If you like grunge, um, you like Pearl Jam, you like Rage, you like Nirvana, you like Soundgarden, everyone else sucks. You know, if you're going to rock with like Southern California Punk and Blink-182 and like, um, and I don't know, and I don't know, I'm sorry, I can't be perfect. That's group. Like then you're that you're into skateboarding tattoos, long cargo shorts with chains. You eat burritos with extra guac. You skateboard, you surf, and you listen to garage bands. And you never go to a venue that's more than like a thousand people because screw the patriarchy. You know you're very loyal to your genre. Now with TikTok, everything is back. like it's all back. Yeah, it's I all do back. think. I think enough time has to pass for people to then go like, oh, oh that's how cool that is. Like the 40, 40 year rule. Yeah, yeah, four decades. Indeed, people. A lot of people are low. To our family. As most of Chicago says, they might. The Eyewitness News Morning Team is just getting started. The latest news, weather, and traffic from the team you trust. ABC7 Eyewitness News this morning. can be challenging at any age, but it's never too late to make improvements. Here with important nutritional tips for healthy aging is Dr. Melita Jambolis. Hi. Thank you. Welcome back to the show. Hi. Nice to see you. Well, so far, so good. Yeah. 
so good, I've already dipped into the series. Okay, see, you said there weren't going to be any foods that you like, but I there know, are. So we're going to start with vitamin B12. Okay. And this, your, your absorption of B12 decreases with age. Mm -hmm. And if you're taking any acid blocking medication or you're on a more plant based diet. So it's what very acid blocking medication. Like Pepsi, anything for ulcers, oh, anything for ulcers. Okay, so, or heartburn. So, mm -hmm. this is, you can get it from plant based from four to five cereals. Otherwise, it's really in animal products, but you have to make sure that the cereal is fortified. You can also get it from red meat, from salmon, canned tuna. And if you need to, you can take a supplement, but do I so. Take, I take a dropper. Okay. In liquid form. Well, you probably don't need it though if you eat meat, but that, I mean, all Always, sometimes you don't always need a supplement just because something. He loves a supplement. Okay. Oh, yeah. You and Gallman, you and Gallman. Okay, okay. Yeah. magnesium. This is one of the most important minerals you get in your diet. More than fifty percent of us don't get enough. It's important for high blood pressure, for managing high blood sugar, for stress, for sleeping better. Mm -hmm. It has so many benefits, and you can get it from delicious foods like peanut butter, beans. You can do dried or even canned pumpkin seeds is actually oh, the top yum. source. You can put them in the peanut butter. I actually make these protein balls with oh, pumpkin with the seeds. Pumpkin seeds. Oh, it's amazing. Vitamin D. People, a lot of people are low on vitamin D. This mm -hmm. is crazy. This is, you notice there's no food here because oh, right. you really can't get it from food. There are a few fortified foods and a few food sources, but they don't give you enough. And the ability to make vitamin D in your skin goes down with age. Plus, if you weigh more, if you have darker skin, you don't absorb as much from the so you really need to take a supplement, but be careful because they're in a lot of different supplements. Okay. So you may have a lot in your multivitamin. You may have a lot in a bone building supplement. Talk to your doctor about getting so you don't it. Right. Overtake the you don't want to overtake it, but you don't want to underdo it. So get it tested and follow up. Protein. Protein is critically important. See, I fucking told you. Nurse's office and cafeteria. He says the extermination process began right as the bed bugs were discovered. He re Fuck. Don't be a the victim. I wanted Erica to say I'm sorry face to face. Erica, why did it take you so long? This is what the fuck I wanted. There's supposed to be a Fucking, I recorded the news. From fucking 132.1. There's got to be a fucking news from fucking... There it is. The ABC Eyewitness News at 10 p.m. That's what threw me off. Is that Foods, it said. Like peanut butter, see, beans, you can do. I did, I did it. I went and I checked this shit. And I realized is that when this was recording, the, the nightline was still going on. And some, for some reason, it got pushed back 10 minutes because of something earlier. I don't know if there was a sports game or something or an award show. I don't fucking know. So I set the recorder for the news, knowing that on the news, it would it's because of the delay. The news on your TV guide, on your guide, was, was going to actually still be the ending of the show. But it was like at 105 in the morning, but it's still called ABC News at 10, the 10 p.m. news, because at 1 a.m., it's just a replay of the 10 o'clock news. So I'm looking in my guide and I'm looking for where's the news at one. And it says, it says news at 10, but I didn't look and see the date was February 1st and it was recorded at one Oh five. So this is supposed to be the news. I'll show you. Like, look, see how it says ABC seven eyewitness news at 10 PM, but one Oh five to one thirty seven. I thought I had accidentally deleted it, but I didn't. So this is fucking some sweet fucking ball jizz to my ears. Fried or even... Not my mouth. I don't swallow it. Jizz in my ears. That shit comes out easy. Q-tips were designed to get jizz out, not wax. Trust me. Wax, you want fire. Jizz, Q-tips. Okay. Liquid form. Well, you probably don't need it. 
Burn. Okay. Like liquid form. Well, you probably don't need it though if you eat meat. But that, I mean, always. Sometimes you don't always need a supplement yeah. just because something. He loves you a supplement. Love you, you and Gallman. You and Gallman. Okay. okay. Yeah. Magnesium. This is one of the most important minerals you get in your diet. More than fifty percent of us don't get enough. It's important for high blood pressure, for managing high blood sugar, for stress, for sleeping better. Mm -hmm. It has so many benefits, and you can get it from delicious foods like peanut butter. Beans, you can do dried or even canned. Pumpkin seeds is actually oh, the top yum. source. You can put them in the peanut butter. I actually make these protein balls with oh, with the vitamin D. It's amazing. Vitamin D. People, a lot of people are low on vitamin D. This mm -hmm. is this is. You notice there's no food here because right. you really can't get it from food. There are a few fortified foods and a few food sources, but they don't give you enough. And the ability to make vitamin D in your skin goes down with age. Plus. If you weigh more, if you have darker skin, you don't absorb as much from the. So you really need to take a supplement, but be careful because they're in a lot of different supplements. Okay. So you may have a lot in your multivitamin. You may have a lot in a bone building supplement. Talk to your doctor about getting. So you don't want to overtake the. Vitamin. You don't want to overtake it, but you don't want to underdo it. So get it tested and follow up. Protein. Protein is critically important as we age. You need to think about the total amount, about half your body weight, the timing of it as you get body older, okay. you, well, maybe a little bit more than half since your body okay. is lower, but okay. the timing, you have to have it three times a day so it's mm -hmm. distributed to trigger so your it. muscle yep. to build, mm -hmm. and then the quality. And animal-based protein tends to be Love some of the cheese. highest quality for plant-based tofu you can mm -hmm. do and different things like that. Yeah. So really, really important for preventing frailty as we age. Calcium. Calcium. This is a huge issue for women as we age. 50% mm -hmm. of women are going to have a broken bone because of osteoporosis. Mm. Calcium is essential. You can get it from a lot of different foods, but women may need to supplement, especially if they don't eat too much, because mm -hmm. even a cup of yogurt only has 25% of the daily value. Oh, no kidding. Yes. And mm -hmm. last but not least, vitamin C. This is really important for protecting your immune system for healthy skin, healthy collagen. You need to eat it every day because it's not stored in your body. So fruits like kiwi and strawberries, there's some berries, sorry. Mm -hmm, yeah. And broccoli is an excellent source, but if you cook it in water, mm -hmm. you drain all the vitamin C off. So you need to steam it or microwave it, or you can roast it, but don't boil it if you want to. Oh my gosh, you're changing my life. Roast it, but don't boil it if you want to. See off. So you need to steam it or microwave it, or you can roast it, but don't boil it if you want to. Now you know that. Podcast, healthy. We'll be right back. Closed captioning sponsored in part by Lidoproteins, collagen peptides supports joint flexibility, which is good when we ask our legs to be arms. Vital proteins for everybody with a body. It's time for a fresh start. This year, start new with Blue. Switch to healthy Blue. I take Qnol Turmeric because it helps with healthy joints and inflammation support. Qnol, the brand I trust. Eating fucking nuts. I know you like eating nuts. I didn't know it was that. Healthy joints and inflammation support. Qnol, the brand I trust. Places to retire. John Batiste performs. See you tomorrow, everybody. Bye-bye.
Kiss her. Kiss her. Eat her nuts. Oh, she's got her hand on his nuts. to make sure that our young people are safe. Community activist Andrew Holmes announcing a $2,000 reward to track down the people responsible. This mother and this father have to go through this, no graduation, a family reunion, and the only family reunion that they have in this year is for families to come in and grieve over a loss of a loved one. So we did reach out to Sen High School for a comment tonight about the student victims. We haven't heard back. We are told by police that there's going to be some extra resources for students or anyone that needs help at Sen High School tomorrow. In the meantime, police tell us that no one has been arrested in the shooting, though they are planning to increase their presence. Diabetes. Don't share. Steps away from their high school. We do everything. Jesus. Breaking now on Eyewitness News. Three teenagers shot, one of them killed. Just steps away from their high school. We do everything in our power to keep our children safe. So this hurts. The mayor's message after back-to-back -back shootings targeting students. New reaction after Chicago becomes the latest city to call for a ceasefire in Gaza. The controversial resolution narrowly passing. Rising temperatures, a mild start to kick off February. And when we'll get that sunshine back. Go Hawks, go Hawks, go Kate. A sold-out crowd at Northwestern's women's basketball game to see Iowa's star player. The fan frenzy over phenom Caitlin Clark. Live from Chicago, ABC 7 Eyewitness News at 10 starts right now. We start tonight with an update to breaking news we've been following all evening. Three teenagers shot today, just steps from the Chicago High School, one of them killed. This happened in the city's Edgewater neighborhood about a block from Sen High School. Police saying the teens were outside shortly after class let out when a car pulled up and several people inside opened fire. Tonight's shooting comes less than a week after two other Chicago students were shot and killed. Mayor Brandon Johnson showing up at this latest scene and calling for an end to the Recent violence targeting young people. ABC 7's Mayor Kawash live for us tonight at St. Francis Hospital in Evanston, where one of the teenagers is being treated. Mayor. That's a 16 year old boy here at St. Francis Hospital in Evanston that I'm told is in critical condition, still being treated here. There's another 15 year old boy who was shot. I'm told he's at Illinois Masonic Hospital in fair condition. In the meantime, we are learning more about the boy who was killed. It's 16 year old Devon Robinson. Pardon me, Devon Gibson, who is passed in this shooting and what police are calling another act of targeted violence. It's the second shooting in the last week involving teenage students in Chicago. Police swarming the city's Edgewater neighborhood today shortly after dismissal at Sen High School. They say three teenage boys were standing outside just about a block away from the school when they were shot. There was a vehicle that pulled up. Several individuals got out of that vehicle and fired weapons in the direction of these individuals striking all three. Mayor Brandon Johnson making a rare appearance at the shooting scene, saying this violence among Chicago's youth is out of hand. The loss of life is horrific under all circumstances, but it is especially harsh when our young people are targeted. Just last Friday, two teenage boys were shot and killed in the loop shortly after leaving Innovations High School. Police Superintendent Larry Snelling says the two shootings are not connected to each other. I asked Mayor Johnson to share his message for parents who are worried about these recent crimes. We're not going to allow these acts of terror to disrupt our livelihoods. My children will be in school tomorrow, and children across this city will be in schools tomorrow. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that our young people are safe. Community activist Andrew Holmes announcing a two. I asked Mayor Johnson to share his message for parents who are worried about these recent crimes. We're not going to allow these acts of terror to disrupt our livelihoods. My children will be in school tomorrow, and children across this city will be in schools tomorrow. And we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that our young people are safe. 
Community activist Andrew Holmes announcing a $2,000 reward to track down the people responsible. This mother and this father have to go through this, no graduation, a family reunion, and only family reunion that they're having this year is for families to come in and grieve over a loss of a loved one. So we did reach out to Sen High School for a comment tonight about the student victims. We haven't heard back. We are told by police that there's going to be some extra resources for students or anyone that needs help at Sen High School tomorrow. In the meantime, police tell us that no one has been arrested in the shooting, though they are planning to increase their presence at all schools across all districts in the city tomorrow when kids arrive to school and when they leave for the day. Live from St. Francis Hospital, Mayor Kawash, ABC 7, Eyewitness News. Just so tragic. Thank you for that update, Mayor. We are also following breaking news out of suburban Dixmore tonight, where there have been two new water main breaks. One is at 141st in Wood, the other at 141st near Page Street. Village officials say there have now been nine separate breaks in the past week. A boil order now currently in place for Dixmore. Tonight, we're also hearing from a Dalton trustee who was near the scene of a crash and shooting in the parking lot of an auto zone. This happening this morning on Sibley Boulevard, just off the Bishop Ford Freeway. Four people were hospitalized. Witnesses describing the chaotic scene. So much was going on. You heard a couple of booms and bangs, I guess, on while they were on Sibley. They hit a couple of people's cars. So it was just a lot going on at one time. The village says two of the four people injured were in critical condition tonight, and one person is now in custody. Illinois State Police helping Dalton casting the deciding vote. That led to the resolution passing, and it also led to strong responses from supporters and opponents of this measure. A protest spilled out on the Daily Plaza, people calling out the violence on the Gaza Strip. But many against the resolution say it's one-sided and ignores part of a complicated conflict. ABC 7 Zero Kong at City Hall with new reaction tonight. Seven months before Chicago hosts the Democratic National Convention, this resolution directly contradicts President Biden's position on the war. At a celebratory rally and march after the vote, supporters of the resolution elected. Hopefully this is just a stepping stone uh, for the next major city and for the next. The council chambers pin drop quiet as the vote deadlocked at 23 to 23 with four older persons not present. The mayor broke the tie. So I will exercise my vote and my right and I vote aye. The upstairs gallery erupting in cheers. The measure's lead sponsor, Alderwoman Rosanna Rodriguez, overcome with emotion. We are a city council, but we also know that what we say here in Chicago matters. The hours-long meeting volatile at times. Marked by repeated interruptions by members of the public. I'm not going to speak until there's decorum. After Deborah Silverstein, the only Jewish elder person, was interrupted twice. Sergeant at Arms, please clear the room. The public was shown the door, but now before giving officials an earful. With the room clear, Silverstein continued. We should not pass a res- Silverstein, she wearing her star, David, the show. I don't even know. Who cares? What is this shit? Person was interrupted twice. Sergeant at Arms, please clear the room. The public was shown the door, but now before giving officials an earful. With the room clear, Silverstein continued. We should not pass a resolution unless it makes clear that Hamas cannot and should not attack again. The ceasefire resolution, which also calls for the release of all Israelis held hostage, quickly dismissed by Israel's top diplomat in Chicago. This resolution would not have an impact in the Middle East. This resolution would just grow more divide among communities in the city of Chicago and provoke more anti-Semitism in the city. Underscoring the divisiveness of this day, an anonymous social media post threatening violence against council members who voted no prompted one alderman, Scott Waggispack, to file a police report tonight. He told me for weeks his office has been inundated with hateful calls and emails. At City Hall, Eric Hong, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. Chicago City Council delayed a vote today on a measure involving police misconduct. The proposal would have serious misconduct cases settled by an arbitrator instead of the police board. Cases currently before the police board will be put on hold until after next month's council meeting. An off-duty Chicago firefighter recovering tonight after being seriously hurt in a shooting 
in Bronzeville. It happened this morning near 38th Place and Rhodes. Police say the 40-year-old was inside his home when three people started breaking into his car. He ran out to try to stop them, and that's when he was shot multiple times. No arrests have been made. Network outage has impacted internet and phone service today at Lurid Children's Hospital. Hospital shared a statement on social media saying it was working to resolve this issue. They added that anyone experiencing an emergency is urged to call 911 or go to the nearest emergency department. We're still waiting back to hear on whether Lurie is still dealing with this outage tonight. Tonight, we are getting new reactions from local parents after a heated showdown on Capitol Hill. Top executives of social media companies facing tough questions during a Senate judiciary hearing over bullying and exploitation on social media. Sitting behind them were the parents of many children who died by suicide after facing bullying online. At one point, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg turned to address those parents. Here we go. The Mark Zuckerberg apology. Parents. Died by suicide after facing bullying online. At one point, Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg turned to address those parents. Lawmakers called for federal regulations on these companies saying that Lawmakers called for federal regulations on these companies saying they're not doing enough to regulate things online. Two Chicago parents were at that hearing. Their 15-year-old son, Nate Bronstein, died by suicide in 2021 after allegedly being bullied online by classmates. They say the ship has sailed for social media platforms. Chicago parents were at that hearing. Their 15-year-old son, Nate Bronstein, died by suicide in 2021 after allegedly being bullied online by classmates. They say the ship has sailed for social media platforms to self-regulate and called Zuckerberg's apology disingenuous. Meaningful action by Zuckerberg or any of the CEOs would to actually be to change their algorithms, the designs of their platforms, Lawmakers on both by Zuckerberg or any of the CEOs would to actually be to change their algorithms, the designs of their platforms. Meaningful action by Zuckerberg or any of the CEOs would to actually be to change their algorithms, the designs of their platforms. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are calling for more regulation. A sold out crowd in Evanston tonight for the Northwestern women's basketball game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. All the buzz surrounding a player on that visiting team. regulate and called Zuckerberg's apology disingenuous. Meaningful action by Zuckerberg or any of the CEOs would to actually be to change their algorithms, the designs of their platforms. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are calling for more regulation.
A sold-out crowd in Evanston tonight for the Northwestern women's basketball game against the Iowa Hawks. Shopping, man. ...of the aisle are calling for more regulation. A sold-out crowd in Evanston tonight for the Northwestern women's basketball game against the... Meaningful action... Meaningful action by Zuckerberg or any of the CEOs would to actually be to change their algorithms, the designs of their platforms. Lawmakers on both sides of the aisle are calling for more regulation. A sold out crowd in Evanston tonight for the Northwestern women's basketball game against the Iowa Hawkeyes. All the buzz surrounding a player on that visiting team. Iowa's Caitlin Clark has become a national phenom and some fans say they went the extra mile just to watch her play here. ABC 7's Kate Gogarin spoke with excited ticket holders at Well Shrine Arena. The fan fever was high and in full supply at Welsh Ryan Arena. Oh, this is like yeah, the best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> but the focus wasn't on the home team. Nor full supply at Welsh Ryan Arena. Oh, this is like yeah, the best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> but the focus wasn't on the home team. Northwestern hosting what? Full supply at Welsh Ryan Arena. Oh, this is like yeah, the best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> but the focus. Is high <laughs> and in full supply at Welsh Ryan Arena. Oh, this is like yeah, the best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> but the focus wasn't on the home team. Northwestern hosting Wednesday night's women's basketball game against Iowa. But people who lined up for hours say they showed up for the This is like yeah, the best yeah. thing ever. <laughs> But the focus wasn't on the home team. Northwestern hosting Wednesday night's women's basketball game against Iowa. But people who lined up for hours say they showed up for the Caitlin Clark Show. Clark, step back. Since Iowa, my mom went to Iowa, then I'm going to go to Iowa too. Brianna Fabia, just one of many young fans of the Iowa basketball star. What are you most excited to see? Uh, so long are playing. Boobies. She's a good three-point shooter. I love watching her score and just everything about her. I got an Iowa t-shirt for Caitlin Clark. We couldn't find a Caitlin Clark one, so an Iowa one will do. The Hawkeye guard has become the new face of women's basketball. Clark breaking records tonight, becoming the all-time leading scorer in Big Ten history. <laughs> Inspiring a new generation of aspiring women's basketball players from Hinsdale Central. Oh. Basketball. Clark breaking records tonight, becoming the all time leading scorer in Big Ten history. Yeah. Inspiring a new generation of aspiring women's basketball players from Hinsdale Central. Kaylin Clark is the GOAT. Just watching her passion in the game, the way she just plays with her team. I like her when she like she just shoots from half court. She's fucking with you. The way she just plays with passion. Her players from Hinsdale Central. Kaylin Clark is the GOAT. Just watching her passion in the game. The way she just plays with her team. I like her when she like she just shoots from half court. Like, not like, she's like, she's crazy. Pulls up, pulls up right there. Drops up. Drops up. Members of the Hinsdale team barely able to contain their energy when asked what they love most about Clark. Kaylin Clark, you know do. what? It's her neck and her shoulder bones, her collarbone. It's her supple, small breasts. I just love everything about her, except for her supple, small breasts. I wish they were bigger. It's her eyes. Definitely her basketball game. After her eyes, her ass, and her supple, small breasts. Go Hawkeyes! And Caitlin. Go Wildcats.
of the Hinsdale team barely able to contain their energy when asked what they love most about Clark. Kaylin Clark is the GOAT. Just watching her passion in the game, the way she just plays with her team. I like her when she like just shoots from half court, like, not like, she's like, she's crazy. Hold up, hold up right there. Drops off. Drops off. Members of the Hinsdale team barely able to contain their energy when asked what they love most about Clark. Kaylin Clark, if you're watching, Clark is my Tonight's game was the first time Northwestern's women's basketball has ever sold out Welsh Ryan Arena. Ticket brokers saying the cheapest general admissions tickets sold for more than $230. In Evanston, Kate Kogiran, ABC 7 Eyewitness News. So exciting with a great role model. Ryan Shevarini, of course, will have highlights from that game coming up later on in sports. I'm people excited she was here. Breaking next tonight, a building collapses near the Boise Airport. The rescue efforts underway at this hour. Alec Baldwin entering a plea to new charges he's facing in that deadly movie set shooting. Break in at a local bakery captured on video. It's the second time they've been hit. And the Southside staple closes its doors, but some people are not giving up hope that cinema Chatham's legacy will live on. It's a quiet night, a quiet end to January. A mild start for the day tomorrow to February. We'll track our temperatures, how high they go, and when the sunshine returns. Always dry scooper. Always dry scooper the poopers. The building collapses near the Boise airport. The rescue efforts underway at this hour. Alec Baldwin entering a plea to new charges he's facing in that deadly movie set shooting. Break in at a local bakery captured on video. It's the second time they've been hit. And the Southside staple closes its doors, but some people are not giving up hope that cinema Chatham's legacy will live on. It's a quiet night, a quiet end to January. A mild start for the day tomorrow to February. We'll track our temperatures, how high they go, and when the sunshine returns. Always dry. There's a crane. What? The next level of exfoliation is here. Available at Paula's Choice and Sephora. Download the ABC7 Chicago News app. Breaking tonight, about a dozen people are injured after a hangar collapse near the Boise Airport in Idaho. The fire department there says a crane was involved, but it is not clear if it fell on the building and caused it to collapse. Officials say everyone is accounted for, but we haven't gotten details yet about any deaths or an extensive injuries. Alec Baldwin has pleaded not guilty to involuntary manslaughter in the deadly shooting on the set of his movie Rust. Remember, this happened in 2021 near Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Baldwin was holding the gun when it went off, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and wounding the director. Baldwin faces up to 18 months in prison if convicted. Back at home, another Chicago bakery has been broken into for a second. Oh, sweet. Artisan bread and sandwiches. Yay. Went off, killing cinematographer Helena Hutchins and wounding the director. Baldwin faces up to 18 months in prison if convicted. Back at home, another Chicago bakery has been broken into for a second time. Surveillance video shows someone smashing the glass storefront at a bakery in Logan Square early yesterday morning. The suspect took off with the cash register. The owners say they hadn't even reopened yet after the last burglary and a similar situation at the flowered bakery in andersonville we've told you about this last night there was a break in there on january 18th and another one this past monday movie theater on chicago south side has unexpectedly closed its doors today people came by a cinema chatham on west 87 to get tickets only to learn They'll have to go somewhere else to see a movie Theater is owned by Imagine Entertainment, which said the business was no longer economically viable. I wasn't going that much, but when I did come, it was good to be in the neighborhood and close and get right back to the house. 21st Ward Alderman Ronnie Mosley hopes someone from the community will take over that theater. Okay, right, let's talk. Basically, it costs more money to run the place than the amount of money you're making. 
about our weather on this Thursday. Of course, uh, we've been searching for the sun out there. We got a little glimpse of it today. Wow, but wait, is it one? You know who we got? We got God's daughter, Jesus's fraternal twin, Josius. And this it's Wednesday, right? <laughs> I'm checking January 31st. Right. Tomorrow's February 1st. Yeah. Well, in my head, I was just thinking it is the okay. last day of January, right? right. right. Everybody right. thought it was Thursday today. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> yeah, they wanted to be. Yeah. <laughs> I feel you. We're going to get through the middle of this week and boy, into the day tomorrow. We're going to get those temperatures climbing uh, about 20 degrees above average for some of you. So we are starting February off on a mild note. Right now, outside, ending January mild above the average high of 32 everyone pretty much in the mid to upper 30s o'hare sitting at 37 degrees and our high today 38 so we really haven't budged much and the average 32 degrees a live look outside unfortunately this didn't come in time when the sun was up today but we do have mostly clear skies a few high clouds and the issue is Overnight into tomorrow, clouds will build back in. But right now, it is mostly clear, 37 at? degrees. Satellite and radar showing mostly clear skies. A few high clouds up to the north. Those will continue to stream on in as we head into the day tomorrow. Perhaps some peaks of sun, but we're really not going to get that sun in full effect or force until we get into the weekend. But good timing. So as you take a look at future casts, you can see by tomorrow morning, the clouds on the increase of Europe super early when the sun rises. Likely to see some of that. We have winds out of the south. Watch our temperatures. They go way up. Off to the south and west. Some of you climbing into the low 50s tomorrow. If you're along the lakefront up to the north, wind shifting out of the north, not going to get into the 50s, but high still expected in the mid to upper 40s. Then a front moves through late Thursday into Friday, and that will drop our temperatures, but we're still going to stay above average for the remainder of this week. But enjoy the day tomorrow. Increasing clouds becoming mostly cloudy. Temperatures on the up and up as we head into Friday, a little bit cooler, but only dropping to 40 by Saturday. We do get some sunshine here back in the forecast, a little bit cooler along the lakefront, but high temperatures again in the 40s. So we continue this trend, really quiet pattern as we, as we head into the start of February, which is really nice. So 45 degrees, mid to upper 40s, near 50, some of you south and west through the day tomorrow. As we head late week, here comes that front. We turn a little bit cooler, and then we start to clear it out as we head into the weekend. High pressure and control keeps the rain and the clouds to the west of us as we head through Saturday and Sunday. So getting you some sunshine with high temperatures this time of the year in the 40s, looking lovely. And you can see that warmer than average trend right across our region as we head into a new month. Temperatures upper 40s, low 50s, right into the middle of February. So for tonight, temperatures dropping into about the mid to upper 30s, so staying steady as we head into our Friday, partly cloudy sunshine returning for the middle to the end of next week. That looks and it will feel nice. We will be right back after this. Just the end for me. So gangsta, I'm so thug, you're the only one. I'm budged watching the average 32 degrees. A live look outside. Unfortunately, this didn't come in. You're the only one that me. Don't you try to let me go home so we are starting February off on a mild note. Right now, outside, ending January mild, above the average high of 32. Everyone pretty much in the mid to upper 30s. O'Hare sitting at 37 degrees and our high today, 38. So we really haven't budged much. And the average, 32 degrees. A live look outside. Unfortunately, this didn't come in time when the sun was up today. But we do have mostly clear skies, a few high clouds. And the issue is overnight into tomorrow clouds will build she must have pressed she must have pressed the wrong button so the highest okay today's high is 38 hair sitting at 37 degrees and, and last year at this time it was 12 degrees uh today's high 38 during the daytime oh no no, no. Oh, i get it 1989 okay no 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 today's high was 38 degrees Last year on this date, it was 12 degrees, and the average, I'm sorry, and the record temperature for this date in the history was in 1989, it was 65 degrees on January 30th, or January 31st, huh? I guess the wind chill must have been 37. Last year when it was 12 degrees, the wind chill was negative 4. 
oh, the average temperature on this date is, the average high is 32. Uh, no, the average wind chill is 18 and the average wind chill, the record wind chill is negative 21. I think that has to be a low. I'm going to say that today's high is 38 and the low is 37. Last year, the high was 12 degrees. Oh, it's not the low. It's not like we, we're expecting a high of 38 and a low of 37. Today, the highest temperature that we reached was 38. The lowest was 37. So it pretty much stayed around 37, 38. Last year, at this, on January 31st, 2023, the highest temperature reached was 12 degrees, and it got as cold as negative 4, probably during the night. The average temperature, the average high for this date was 32, and the average low has been 18. And the record highest temperature was 65, and the coldest it was was just five years ago when it was negative 21. And so we are starting February off on a mild note. Right now outside, ending January mild, above the average high of 32. Everyone pretty much in the mid to upper 30s. O'Hare sitting at 37 degrees and our high today, 38. So we really haven't budged much. And the average, 32 degrees. A live look outside. Unfortunately, this didn't come in time when the sun was up today. But we do have mostly clear skies, a few high clouds. And the issue is overnight into tomorrow, clouds will build back in. But right now it is mostly clear, 37 degrees. Satellite and radar showing mostly clear. She got explained that better. She's going too fast. High of 32, everyone pretty much in the mid to upper 30s. O'Hare sitting at 37 degrees and our high today, 38. So we really haven't budged much. And the average, 32 degrees. A live look outside. On Some trees. And remember, this is now behind seven minutes also. New at 10, Lockport Township District 205 opened up its central campus for a tour tonight after a ceiling collapsed in a classroom back in November. This tour is being offered weekly, giving taxpayers a first-hand look at the damage before they're asked to vote on a March referendum to fund $85 million in renovations to that building. Chicago's Jennifer Hudson, Grammy Award winner singer, Oscar-winning actress, and a talk show host. Now she's going to play basketball. She announced today that she is taking part in the NBA All-Star Celebrity Game. It is in Indianapolis in about two weeks. Hudson says that she is playing in honor of her late brother, whose birthday is that day. And Derek Fisher has been coaching her. So, you know, she's going to rock. She right? can hit some threes like Caitlin okay. Clark. Hey, right. Ryan's here <laughs> next to her. Look at how with sports going on. Yeah, I know we've been talking a lot about Caitlin Clark, uh, the best player in women's college basketball. Showed us why against the Cats. We'll have highlights. And on the men's side, a frustrating overtime end for Chris Collins and his team. Highlights next. Dude, you Because the only thing dripping should be your style. Plop, plop, here's Pibs with Alka Seltzer Plus Cold and Fluid. Also, try for fizzy fast cough relief. Are you ready for winter? Oh. Leaf. Are you ready for winter? Old drafty windows causing cold, sleepless nights, uncomfortable days, and high heating bills? Call Window Nation now and get 0% interest for five years. Plus, take 50% off any style window. Call or visit windownation.com. Wouldn't it be great if everything could be fast and easy? You mean even my ejaculation into your urethra? Well, nothing's easier than saving money with Insure on the Spot. Call Insure on the Spot today at 773-202-5060 or visit insureonthespot.com. Explain to me how you run from something to shooting it you get fast. Criminals using ad... Dad. Experience the fuck at home. Hi, Captain Marvel is in our house. One, two, three. Hold on for action pack lock. Going on any space adventures. The Marvels, APG 13. And Marvel is in our house. One, two, three. Hold on for action pack rock. You are not going on any space adventures. The Marvels, APG 13.
on any space adventures. The Marvels, APG 13, streaming February 7th. What? Popeye's new chicken wings make no sense. Oh my God, what are you doing? And then we have the audacity to call all five flavors fast food. Someone should really say something or maybe order something. All right, so this is the end of fucking what? I don't fucking know. It's the end of fucking season two, episode 105. No, season two, episode 104 from January 31st, 2024. That's it. I'm out. Like, dislike, comment. Come to my house and save me. I'll give you meatballs and piano lessons. Neither of them will be good, but you'll save my life. I am Phil Linda Blanc. I will see you during the Olympics. Make sure to watch past episodes, future episodes, and I hope you enjoy this. If not, that is okay. You do not have to watch me, but I will watch you while you are sleeping with banana.